Yes. Okay, I think that everyone is on the chat. If anyone cannot listen to us, please let us know. And I think that we are good to start. So welcome everyone to the Safer Community Stand Up. Today we're going to focus on testing DevOps and we're going to cover a lot of uh, questions that we and requests that we have gotten on our Facebook group. And we pretty much, as always, will discuss the framework that we love and discuss best practice, discuss our personal projects and everything else. With me here are DevExpress MVP, Manuel, Dave, Jose. Uh, I'm really excited to present that Danny PM for SAF and HPO is here joining us and he will be answering questions on the chat. So that's awesome, right? So every question that you have had for a while, boy, and you're in your head, feel free to put it on the chat. We are gonna get to it. Uh, if it's not in the same moment at the end of the press of the meetup. So please, let's uh, start. We meet the second Thursday of every month to discuss about SAF, XPO, Blazor, to talk about our personal projects, to share our experience, to share knowledge. And there is, again, no dress code. There is an agenda, even if we say there is no agenda, but the agenda is made by the community. This is an event that is for the community and by the community. So uh, before we uh, actually start the, the, the event, I have to say that I'm really proud to be showing up on Microsoft blog about one of the .NET event uh, virtual user group that they are uh, recommending to everyone to see. And uh, before moving forward, let me show the presentation that they always uh, ask us to give. So this is the link for the .NET virtual user group. If you go there, there are a lot of nice uh, events happening. So choose one of your liking, attend, and just share it, uh, participate. So actually, we are right here on today. Yes, first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, again, Donet Foundation, they always ask us to put this uh, presentation in the beginning of our event. Uh, with that out of the way, I will let Manuel, he is the uh, a Dev Express MVP for a few years already, and I will let him introduce himself. I'm pretty much, I'm pretty sure that much of everyone here already know him. But please, Manuel. Hi, I'm Manuel. I am at Dev Express for I don't know six, five years. Dennis, can you correct me? Because it's like five years or something like this. Blogging about. Uh, oh, I don't, don't remember already. I, I don't remember either. <laughs> Uh, it, it's it's a long time. I, I blogged a, a lot about X, XAF, XPO, or and especially about testing. Uh, I am kind of development guide guy for since I can thinking. It's like uh, like 14 years old, starting to uh, building pieces together and stuff like this. And yeah, I'm. Happy to be on the call and yeah, so learn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's next? Maybe Dave. Dave, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Dave Hesketh, uh, Lama Chant Technology. Thank you for bringing our website up. Um, yeah, I've been coding for a, a very long time, uh, doing XAF work since 2008 when it was released. We do uh, lots of training, we offer some free free XAF additional modules uh, to make kind of the normal things we come across in applications available to everybody. Uh, we collect a lot of samples that come from DevExpress that are, are useful and wrap those up. So uh, check those out for sure. Uh, other than that, here for questions, here for conversation, whatever you want. That's it for me. Okay, so basically, um, well, hello everyone. I'm Jose Ojeda, like everyone knows me by Jose. I'm from El Salvador. Um, I'm on Developer Express MVP. I'm like, I was like named like this year, I think. Oh, no, December, I think. No, January. So this is our company, Bit Frameworks. Um, we basically do training for enterprise companies that want to go uh, into .NET development, usually SAF, actually, or summary. And well, like, I really like to share whatever I get to know that is new. So you will see a lot of videos of me in the, my YouTube channel. Uh, I guess the link will be there somewhere. And well, whatever question you have, 
regarding anything that is like related to reflection, especially because we use that a lot here in the office. It's like, just drop me a line in, in Twitter or in the GitHub repositories or in the YouTube channel. I will gladly give you like, uh, try to help. So Javier, it's your turn. So uh, again, I have seen this in a few events before. I'm really proud to be sharing here this meeting with uh, these talented people that I have been following for years. So thank you, Manuel. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Jose. And thank you, Dennis, for being here and, and uh, supporting us on this event. Uh, we never thought that we we're going to get so much support for the community. So thanks, everybody that is watching. Thanks, everybody that is taking the time to do a live to answer questions here with us because you can always have the choice to watch it later on YouTube. So we really appreciate the support. Manuel? Should, shouldn't we introduce Dennis? Because sure. not everybody on the call maybe need, uh, knows Dennis, <laughs> except he uh, wrote one ticket in, this, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the Def Express support forum. So let's cheers for Dennis. Yeah, absolutely. And I always put uh, Dennis PM from Microsoft and for, sorry, for SAF and XPO. And I think that pretty much if you guys are like me, that we uh, read the support ticket every day, you have no way to not know Dennis. So again, that's one of the advice that I always give to beginners. So follow the support ticket, read the source code, and get involved in the community. If you don't do those three things, you're going to get proficient on SAF, and you're going to uh, ease the learning curve. So uh, again, there is a powerful in the community on being together. And before move forward, I always want to show all the, we are everywhere. We are in the meetup as this event that we're having, we meet the second Thursday of every month and we just have great discussion about stuff. We have a Facebook group that, that is getting more and more. Oh my God. Oh my God, I'm sorry, <laughs> let's go back. I wanted to show that right now we are six, five, 563 members as of right now. So we are growing every week, so that's awesome. I think that in the last middle a month away it was like 420, something like that. So we are having a great growth. And not only that, we're having great discussions. People are just posting their experience, posting the issues that they're having. So that's the, the, the whole goal of all, all of this, to share their knowledge and get assistance from other members. So we also have our uh, LinkedIn group. So feel free to join and also discuss here because I know that Facebook is not for everyone. I have getting emails about the software community stand up saying hey this is really good but uh, i don't use facebook i don't use facebook i don't i will never use it so and i understand that everybody has their privacy concern or everything so if you don't use facebook you can go to linkedin you can follow staff on twitter follow us on twitter you can join the gear there are a great discussions being happening in there right now about uh, your personal projects about things that uh, how SAF, how XPO is doing things. And if you see, if you post something there, we, we Dennis, the Dev Express team and ourselves are always trying to, to, to help as much as we can, depending on time. We also have SAF weekly, please subscribe. We have a, a weekly, and sometimes it's not a weekly because it's a, a, a again, a project, a work and everything else, it sometimes doesn't allow us, so, but it has a, we try to keep uh, all the suffers up to date with the new that is happening in the world of SAF, XPO, Blazor. And one thing that I want to uh, really emphasize on this talk about community is I think that all of this that we're doing, all this passion that we have from SAF is getting contagious because, for example, we have a suffer from El Salvador who wrote us. And I just checked it like last week, two days after we talked, he did a blog post in Spanish, of course, about SAF, about why he thinks that SAF is the, the, the best so the framework and the best solution for uh, enterprise applications. So that meaning that that means that more people are getting integrated in the community, are getting uh, motivated to share the knowledge. And I, I'm with you. Sometimes, like not everyone is. Uh, some people are shy. Some people doesn't want to share, but. Some people are uh, have the like I have had it like the imposter syndrome that hey is this 100% somebody that knows more than me could tell me hey this is not right and I will tell you the things if I made a mistake and Manuel tell me hey you are wrong I fix it I learn I move forward so that's better than not being involved than not being together than not sharing the knowledge that will make the community to grow so uh, in the Facebook group also Robert Anderson one of the Dev Express MVP he 
uh, join us. And he actually say, we're gonna, I'm gonna start writing, I'm gonna start writing articles again about that. He just has been uh, really busy with his master in cognitive service and everything else. But I, more and more uh, community members, more and more staffers are getting involved and are sharing their knowledge, are working together, are collaborating, and that's the whole power of this. That ensures that the community grows and that we make the SAF uh, ecosystem powerful. So, and in here, in this exact example, I want to let Manuel talk about this. We have a great example, and I want to actually, in the Gitter, uh, Alex Miller, he already said that he's writing a blog post about using XPO on the Support Ticket Center. And Support Ticket Center, if you read it as we do, it has, I don't know a number, and Dennis can tell a better number than me, but it has a lot, a lot of Support Tickets daily. In the time frame of 12 years, 13 years, that should be a really huge, huge amount of data. And XPO is handled as a champ. <laughs> so again, uh, looking forward to your post, Alex Miller. So, and I want to, uh, now that we're talking about Alex, let Manuel talk about Alex's uh, contribution to senior. Yeah, uh, the, 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 the thing is like, uh, um, uh, probably it's a, it's a little bit uh, a pick forward to, to, to Tasty, but because, uh, uh, I don't want to explain too detail what Tasty is right now because it's, it's a little bit early <clears throat> in the talk. But the thing is, like, um, Alex did his every first pull request of GitHub ever. And uh, it was like talking about, hey, okay, uh, I have this icon pack in there in, 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 in my Nougat package, and it was it's like six megabytes of size if you download it, and it's like, I don't care. It doesn't get into the the, the output folder or something like this. But uh, of course, I I'm maintaining uh, Tasty and all all the stuff around Xenial. And I was okay. I don't care about uh, six megabytes throwing about uh, around the network. And he was like, Alex is like. Mm. I, I don't want to get mean and like 30 years more in, in, into software development than I am. And I am really old in this stuff. And it's like, this is really inefficient. And, he's, and, and, and we were chatting about Gitter and stuff like this. And he sent me a PR. And it's like, you can see the numbers. It's like 71% uh, smaller. And uh, it's like 81% smaller and 82% smaller and stuff like this. And I merged the modification of the logos because, hey, it was his very, very first PR on GitHub. And I, 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 that, 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 that for me, it's like, <clears throat> uh, we talked about stuff and, and, and hey, can you, can, you, can you go there and, 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 and can you small down the files? And I, okay, I, I don't care. <laughs> and he just, made the change and I can approve it. And that, that it's all kind of the community thing about how we, we can make products more effective and more open and more inclusive to all of us. And that's the first PR of Alex Miller and I, I really cheer it up. It, it, that's, if I, I don't have to say anything about it, it's just like, can you do that? Uh, can you imagine that for 20 years ago, for example? Nobody could. No. No, and, and that's so, the way that's the way to make the, the hey Alex, congrats. That's the way that we want to, to, to move forward, to everyone collaborating together, to everyone check yes. what they know. To, to, to make to, just to make it a better place to uh, it's more efficient, it's it's more uh, cheerful to work with. It's the better documentation. It's it's uh, it's everything yeah. around it. So it's... Actually, actually, you have like more than one brain working in the same idea, yes. yeah. and it goes yeah. like this. For example, I was creating the build script for my repository like two days ago, and I was doing like, okay, you need to put these three parameters, and it's done. And I show it to Javier, and he told me like, you have to write three stuff there. Can you make it just one? He's like, yeah, but I don't think like that. He thinks like that, and I need to fix it. He actually yeah. thinks like a lot like my brother, like too many clicks, uh, too much screens, too long. And I never think like that because I'm more like technical like person. Like 
It's like, see, the code is really nice. Like, it's fast. No, but too much clicks. So <laughs> it's good to have the opinion of something, someone else. Uh, then you're like, hey, this file size is too big. Uh, this is too complicated. I don't understand that. So I, I actually, like, uh, um, I want to congratulate, like, Alex. Like, yeah, whatever you can do for the community or whatever anyone can do for the community, believe me, it's not the smallest step. It will help a lot of people. I want to shout out for one person in all that net space because no, nobody knows Scott Hanselman. Uh, I sent the video to Scott Hanselman, uh, from Scott Hanselman about pull requests and gate and all that kind of stuff. So it's a low, whole video presentation about getting into open source with, with GitHub. And it's like three videos, it's like 30 minutes. And I sent that link to Alex and it was its first pull request. There's nothing you can imagine that about. So it's like a... So, so let me tell you a personal really, really story. congrats. Let me tell you a personal story. Last year, I went to uh, UNOCONF and right there, uh, we did a workshop about using UNO and how to use it and so on, so on. And it was not my first pull request, but it was my first recognition. So I did it really, it was, I, I don't even remember. It was a, something on documentation, it's something it, it might be a spelling thing, something that simple. And after I did that, they put me on the contributors. Oh, the, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. It was so simple, but it was so satisfying. So yeah. I felt like a superhero there. It's like they are by value in my job. So again, Alex, congrats. I know uh, it might not seem much to you, but for us, it's like that, that's the great start. And when we do things like that and we work together, we got really, but we give value. That is, that's, that's the end goal to our customer, to our applications, to what we add features, so on, so on. So uh, we move forward. I will have to say again, I did have a few uh, small uh, pull requests as well on the Safer links about uh, localizations sections about so, testing so, we have tasty tasty here from and, oh thank you and i have <laughs> a big list of links that i will be adding to here so uh, keep tuned we're gonna make this a repo uh, as comprehensive as we can with all the Sabia, can, can you show can you show the closed pull requests for short right here but the closed ones uh -huh. No, uh, not, not not from Tasty, from from XF. Uh, awesome. Okay, let's go for it. No, no, I'm not in that one. Okay. So there are also four ones that uh, it, it, it 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 ends up in 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 a much better place, I guess. Yeah, it's not much, but it's definitely something that I I'm really proud of it. So again. And I, we were talking before the meetup with, with Manuel, and we were saying about, and again, we might do a survey later on our Facebook group on LinkedIn and everywhere, but I wanted to, I was telling Manuel, I saw this because I, every time that I'm, I, I read a lot of uh, summary, a lot of Uno, a lot of .NET, uh, ASP.NET, the community, I'm always seeing what everybody else is doing in their community to see how we can do it in ours. And I saw they have this, summaring a community toolkit and pretty much if you know summaring i won't get too in deep of that they have like a repo where they uh, have a collection of uh, behaviors custom renders things that people use all, all the time so i was thinking we might at some point and i don't know i'm just throwing that out there and then we can discuss it have something like that for SAF, like if you create your own custom list editor and you want to share it, it's not a whole module, it's not something that you want to pack in something, it's just a class, a controller, and you want to put it there and you explain what it does and everybody can maybe uh, benefit from it. Just an idea, we'll talk about this later, but I think that we might do something like that. If I have a token property editor, if you have a gallery list editor, if you have something and you want to share it, if it's not on the NDA or anything like that, I think that that might be a great thing that we can include. So that's a uh, with the community. Uh, Jose wanted to quickly discuss uh, 
and we're gonna give a, that that's a one of the announcement about uh, the version of XPO API supporting uh, unsupported sorry supporting unsupported database for Netcore. So Jose, can you talk us a little bit about yeah. that? <clears throat> I will like um, share my screen. Okay, I don't know if I uh, just one second. Let's see. Share the screen. Let's share this one. Okay. Um, I hope everyone can see. This is a virtual machine. So I did this video yesterday. Um, so I'm going to run this again, like really fast. So uh, maybe we have, let's see, PowerPoint. Uh, something like really easy, just like one second. It's like, okay, we have some cases where your database adapter, the ADO.NET adapter will not run on .NET Core. And lately we've been getting a lot of calls because of that, because everyone wants to move to Blazor. So basically what we did is, okay, we have uh, the XPO API um, provider for, for XPO. So basically the idea behind that is like, okay, we forward all the communication through HTTP uh, somewhere, and then it's executed in the server side and forward the information back. I mean, the same pattern of XPO is like really, really nice. And it allows you to do something like this. So I told actually Javier that we work together. It's like, uh, okay, Javier, I will not make anything uh, else anymore for .NET, the full version. I will just do for .NET Core and, and above and basically not the standard. But uh, then we have some calls from customers from Dominican Republic, Italy, like, hey, we're using one connector that you developed for us that it will only run on net, dot net full. I mean the four, six, eight, no, four, six and above, right? So, but we want to move to, to Blazor because everyone wants to move to Blazor tomorrow as soon as it's done. So uh, I said, like, well, I, I will take a look on that. And also we have some new leads in the, in the, in the company for like new businesses that requires something like this. So basically the idea is like, if you have an application that you want to move to .NET Core, but your connector is on just .NET, the full version, like the four, six and above, uh, basically you can do something like this. It's like, we have the XPO connector here and depending on your needs, you can do, you can call something that is implemented in ASP.NET Core or ASP.NET, the regular version. So you can connect to different providers, for example, uh, the ones that are in .NET Core for the .NET Core version and the ones that are in full .NET for the all framework. So then we have the, this technical example. I put the link like yesterday on GitHub and Twitter also, I think. Uh, so basically the idea is like we have two clients here. One is a .NET Core client and one is a .NET Framework client. The code is exactly the same. I mean, the calls from the client. So basically it's something like this. Is that we register the provider, the one that we created is open source, it's free, everyone can use it. Uh, then you get the connection string. Here I have two connection strings, one for ASP.NET that will be full framework or for six and above and net core framework. So in this case, I'm not using the net core actually for anything. I'm just using the ASP.NET. That's the one that I want to show. So then this is basically the updater of that we have here in the office. It's like we have our own version of the updater, not for SAF, but for XPO. And then we initialize the schema, we create like a hundred records, then we commit and then we read it back. And actually for this, we are using Bogus. Javier did a video on Bogus. I don't know if it's in English or just in Spanish. I guess it's in both. Um, so we do just for generate data without having to do customer one or, um, uh, or for each loop. So uh, basically I'm going to run this, it's like really quick. I uh, just wanted to show you the implementation here in the ASP.NET project. This is basically an ASP.NET Web API project. This is like the one that you do like file new project. So but it's not uh, core. It's no, it's, it's not core. It's, it's, yes, it's four six two. Actually, yeah, I want I want to show you that. Uh, this is um, four six two. 
and the client is of course is netcore 3 so it's session 2 so it's what well it's uh, the ancient one yeah yeah it, i mean it looks like a thousand years old i was telling that to javier like you work so much in the design pattern of asp.net core and you like it a lot i really love it i think like it's one of the best uh architecture out there but then it's like well I, we need to go back to asp.net traditional one and was a little bit complicated like for two days but after that you just get used to how the stuff were before and actually i wanted to move this project to to an sdk project like this like here like sdk project but it looks like it's impossible to move some type of projects at least maybe asp.net projects so we tried i didn't succeed if someone knows how to do it like i would really appreciate your help in that this is there is no even. way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, there, well, there is no way. So basically here we have just one controller, the XPO API controller. So this inherits from our XPO API base controller. This is the only thing that you need to do in your application. You just put this. Then since we're sharing the same code with the .NET Core version, you have to put also an app settings file. And here we have like, this service is hosting 10 XPO data layers. And the number 10 is actually a Microsoft Access data layer. So Microsoft Access will only run on 32 bits. Well, you can do something different, but in most common cases, will only run on 32 bits. And of course, you will require the full net framework. Or, I mean, I always refer as full net framework, but it's just the old net framework <coughs> in general. So. This will basically create the database here in this uh, folder, which I have. Uh, let me open that because I cleaned my desktop before the the meeting, and this is Saint Petersburg. Uh, oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, it's like really nice. This is Never River. Um, so let me show you access. Okay, so here we have an access database. I'm going to delete it, so you can see that I'm actually doing it at the moment i don't know javier if i'm you're seeing my whole screen can you see like the start menu on the window we because, can we can okay yeah, it looks can, like yeah. the window is smaller than that what i'm sharing is smaller than the window okay so okay here is empty so basically um, this is the magic so we will run the service and let's just run this Any questions so far? Yeah, and it doesn't have to be related to what we're talking. If you have a question yeah. and you want to get answered later on, please put it on the chat. We're going to get to it definitely. Okay, so here this is the ASP.NET, what the default template puts. If you want to do it, just the uh, Web API, you can do it like that. But when you follow the template, what they tell you, you end up with a website like this. So the URL also will depend on how you set up your API, but in this case it's API, XPO or API, this is the name of the controller. So you will see a message like this, like this is working. And then you will see the full name of the type. Remember that in here you should see ASP.NET, no ASP.NET Core, because that will be the other version. So after that, I'm going to start, we have this net uh, console project is in .NET Core 3.1. As you can see, there is only one reference to our provider because we include the reference to XPO in the in that Nougat package. So you don't even have to put the XPO there. Um, so, and then we have the ORM, like the customer class, the, the one that you do always for the example. So let me show you the code here. Uh, well, I showed this before, but we have the two connection strings, the one for ASP.NET Core and the one for ASP.NET. So we will I, uh, update the schema and then create 100 records, commit them, and then read them back. So let's go for it. So I'm crossing my fingers because I move stuff from my desktop. <laughs> OK, so uh, we are here we are connecting the connection string. This is the connection string that we are using. I guess it's kind of small, but I hope you can see it is to this address, uh, 44359. So it's the same that is running in here. 
And well, <clears throat> then let's continue. We will update the schema and then we will create the records. And as you remember, this folder is empty. There is no database. Actually, the updater have not executed yet. So the schema update team is executing and then we have here are these hundred records. Then we send it to the server and then we read it back. So that's, that's it. But what I wanted to show you is basically here we have the database is created just right now, uh, 10.32 a.m. is 10.33 actually like one minute ago. And of course the records, I, I cannot tell which, what is inside because we created randomly basically, but here are the hundred records that we just created. So I think this is a really neat case because first we have the example of DB2 for AS, AS400 servers, but they will not move the connector to Netcore. They will have to use the old one. And people from that use access, actually yesterday we answered some tickets in the support center. We, I mean, we didn't answer that. Developer Express have a, an amazing team, which always answered like with the most, uh, actually I would say accurate uh, answers to the questions. But we put the two cents that we have like, hey, if you want to connect from .NET Core to Microsoft Access, you don't have to wait for the OLEDV provider to move to .NET Core. You can just uh, use something like this. So I guess a lot of people is in this case, especially the, our customers that they use uh, custom providers. So in that sense, just get it. I don't know. I mean, that's everything for this video, but Javier, I don't know if you can show the, the YouTube video or the GitHub repository. That so this, people know where yeah. to go and get it. There, this example is on GitHub. You can just download it and run it in your, I mean, for your use case. And any, well, any questions, contribution, changes that you want to do, they are welcome. Uh, it's open source, it's free. You just use it for your case. And just let us know if you are using it. It would be nice to know like, hey, some people in Spain, Italy, El Salvador, Guatemala is using it. So Jose, Jose one, one, one question. Is HTTP the only transport that is currently available? Uh, well, we have also uh, proto woofers from Google. That's the second uh, protocol that we So you can, you, you can do uh, two servers side by side Mm -hmm. uh, and and they don't have to talk about HTTP, so they can be private. So you don't ha don't have to you don't have to do authentication because they are you should do authentication, but uh, 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 you don't have to do it if it's on the same machine. Uh, well, uh, you can do that as you say, like have the same everything on the same machine on the same server. Or we have some customers in Turkey that. Everything is on the same server, so it looks like the, it doesn't the, make the, sense, the, but it the, does. The, 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 main, the, the main thing is, do you have to do it on, on over HTTP or can it be some uh, I mean, no, I mean, you don't have to do it over HTTP. There is, um, I mean, the implementation is like somehow agnostic and we introduce a communication layer in the middle. Yeah. So you can communicate it as whatever you feel like communicating. That's yeah. why we created the, 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 ba the, ba the, ba the basic building block is like history. Uh, yeah, it's basically, it's like HTTP protocol. And yeah. also um, we have added some new, I mean, it, those are not new features, but we have something extra that you don't have in XPO that we introduce compression. We can introduce encryption to the message, even over, even when the message is already over HTTP, S, uh, you can encrypt it again if you want or compress it. And yep. also the, 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 only, the only question was like, do we have to connect over HTTP or- Oh, no, 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 uh, you can do, just protocol. do it directly. Yeah. I mean, there's several ways to do that. I will create like a series of video for that. And yeah. also the second thing is that we use the authentication authorization flow from ASP.NET Core and ASP.NET, yeah. the yeah. normal one. So you can even set up an authentication server where you request a log, uh, like where you log in and you get a token and yeah, then you, yeah. you continue sending the token with the information. The token can expire if you want, but uh, we designed the basic token just with the identity, with the data that it was created and so on. But you can extend them to include any other information that you might need through the communication. Maybe you want to, for example, say like this token is uh, not valid anymore. This person is doing too much queries or 
something in stage happened. Yeah. I just want to block, that, uh, that, the that's, that, that, that's awesome. That, that, that was the question because uh, 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 if you're doing a bridge between net core and, and, and full framework, mm -hmm. there's like, uh, there's all this new concepts inside of .NET Core with, with, with like policy based author, authorization and, 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 and no, all I, actually stuff. Those, those concepts exist in uh, the full net framework, but we try to actually, we try to do the implementation totally agnostic to the technology yeah, and yeah, then yeah. implement it over the technology. So yes, we don't, yeah. because we don't want to carry inside of the code. Yeah, to, yeah. Okay, this is yeah. strongly a strong it's a, it's, to something. It's, a, it's, a, it's layer, layer, layer of the layer. Yeah, it's layer, 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 layer. So you just implement the last layer that you're missing for that type yeah, of technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, we did this because the design of XPO allowed us to do this. Yes. Because yeah, like yeah. the architecture, I will say, is amazing. Again, we mentioned this book every meeting, but Javier, I always forgot the, the book. I just remember the name of the, the person. Pad, Enter, pad Enterprise of Application Enterprise. Architecture. Yeah. 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 We should have it just, I mean, if you really want to invest money on your education, buy that book and read it. Yeah. And you will I be a have it, person after that. Just so you know, I have it for yeah. free on our Amazon Shaft repo. So you don't have to buy nothing. You can go there I, and yeah. get it. I, 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 I read the book and I know how it's working. I, I just wanted to make sure people are, are following along. That is, it's not just a bridge between, between two processes. You can do that. You shouldn't do that without a, a, any authentication. But you basically, you're banning two processes by... Yeah, okay, basically, or... basically we're putting two processes together through HTTP or some communication yes. layer yes, because yes. we can yeah. use uh, Protobuf from Google also. Yeah, uh, but when, the if, protocol if you, layer, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you use a different protocol, basically, um, you can introduce Everything some Everything from stuff. HTTP still works. That's, that, that's the thing. Yeah, I mean, we, we went to the most basic, which is HTTP that everyone is using, everyone knows how. Yeah. It's like super interop uh, the interoperability is like really high. And also in the end is that, uh, well, this allows, for example, we did this for one reason. Javier asked me like, we want, we need to do um, faster development in Xamarin. So we want to use XPO because we love XPO. We use it for so many years that we don't want to use anything else. And it was getting too complicated to use all data, create the classes, the everything i mean we even have automated process even like that it was like really like the bigger the application is the more complex it gets it gets so then we did the first version with wcf but wcf is not going to actually be ported to net 5 and net 3 and they have like some stuff that might work work somehow but uh we have a lot of tickets with developer express team and yeah. after that we say like okay this is just a communication. We can move it to a different layer and we can create our own layer. So basically yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of people is uh, sending those messages regarding like, I, I use WCF, but they want to move forward. How do I do it? Like, can I use your yeah. product? Yeah. And basically it's not that we are a replacing, officially replacing for WCF, but if you're using WCF and you want to move forward to Netcore, you can use your, uh, our solution. And I think it will be just fine. Actually, we will introduce remote method calling soon so you can say like okay i have the invoice in here and it takes like one hour <coughs> it needs to go to the wire so instead of going through the wire you can just run it in the other side and will be faster so oh, that's, that's pretty much for the video yeah i don't know i don't know if i am uh, having a grown version because i find it on internet right away but i would check that if it's a copyright infringement or something might might i have to take it out but either way I, I, I'm just Quickly. looking. I've, I'm just looking. I think I have four copies of that book, but if I go over there, so no. just quickly, uh, we have a lot, a lot to cover today. So, and we are already four minutes into the meetup. So let's uh, try to move forward. So we definitely go to the uh, focus topic of the day, that is uh, testing. Before that, I, when we were talking about the community, I wanted to point out that Expand already starting to put more videos about, so you can have a visual of the expand framework and the models and expand framework is really comprehensive in my opinion sometimes can get overwhelming in some aspect but i would have to say there is a really really 
a lot of nice features, a lot of nice functionality, and apostoli, I will have to give them like big kudos. He's really test-driven development. He starts with the test and then he gets to the functionality. If you check his repository, he has all the tests that he's running on Azure. He has all the tests that he's going for each module. So definitely, definitely big shout out to him and please check it out. Uh, quick questions. And everybody don't feel bad because I didn't get it. Does anyone in the chat uh, know what is the new usability enhancement that SAP 20.2 is coming on with the framework settings compatibility mode? I will give like 30 seconds and then we move forward. <laughs> so and I move forward and we'll come back to this at the end of the video. So uh, okay. <laughs> let's let's come back to the agenda. So testing today we're going to talk about unit tests, functional tests. Uh, we're going to talk about testing, we're going to talk about DevOps, we're going to talk about continuous integration, continuous delivery. So the first thing that we want to emphasize, why testing is important, why do we need to add testing? Because I, I can definitely assure you that I have worked in a lot of projects that we have not done, not even one unit test. So uh, I think Shame that- on it, you. <laughs> I know, I know, and I, 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 but I will have to say because I want to, uh, the uh, suffers that are watching the video are they are doing the same and they think that they don't need it and they have a lot of regressions and they can talk about this of the actually the real value of testing the real values of actually when it's your own product it's your your you have to deal with more maintenance more support more regressions but it's your job but when you have a product to a client that you're going to give it to him if you have all the tests in place, you can verify every user case against a test and you're good to go. I'm done. This is my project. I give it to you. You are from there. So I think that the one who has more experience in testing in, in all the uh, ecosystem, like JavaScript, c -char and everything is manual. So I will let him start with that question. Why testing? Why DevOps? Why, why are we doing this? Should, should, should I go for it? Please. Yeah, the, 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 the thing is, uh, if you, the, the, the main, main idea be, behind testing is like, uh, you have, you have some, some kind of, 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 of source code, you, you have an algorithm, you have your, uh, XPO, XAF application, you want to, to ship it to users, you want to go, get sure that it's in a, uh, that, that really, really works and you don't have, have unhappy users on on the other side of the side of the wire so basically that the, the the main difficulties between testing and 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 and, and getting into um uh you want to ship quickly fast you you have a new requirement you you uh tackle some some uh problems you develop it you get into some uh, uh, troubles with, with implementing it, you test it, so you can verify that there is uh, an input and an output, and you can, can really, really reason about uh, how users are using your system, and you have more confidence in, in, in shipping it earlier, or early, not, not earlier is an is a, is a odd term. It's like, uh, getting some uh, confidence about your code and then getting it out to the users quickly. So, uh, and we are lazy, developers are lazy. So uh, we write our algorithms and, and, and do all kind of stuff and, and, and load hundred shit loads of, 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 of <laughs> records from the, from the database. <laughs> And do some kind of aggregation on top of that, and then we say, okay, ship it, and then it breaks in uh, production. Why? Because every time we think we are very clever, uh, we aren't. <laughs> and the thing is, there's all kinds of testing. So we have like the agile test pyramid. Uh, can can it can it uh, just uh, uh, Google that for me, Jose? Uh, Why, why the Agile Test Pyramid. It's like from Age? Agile Testing Pyramid. Uh, AI. From, AI. Agile Test. from Martin Fowler. It's it's like it's a, 
it's their AHL thing that is going on images, going on images. There is, uh, uh, but yeah, it's like end to end integration testing, unit testing. It's like this whole base of triangle where you have your like end to end, is the, the small little thing you have to automate, and there's your integration test, and then there's a big base of unit testing. It's like uh, unit testing is like do it it on the smallest scale possible, and yeah, that works for most of the time. But the the the, the really 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 difficult problem about testing in, in, in general is you have unit testing, so it's basis layer, you have integration testing, you have end-to-end -end testing, and you're always simulating uh, all kind of interactions with the system. So uh, unit testing, nothing talks to anything. So it's like calculating the stuff and putting thing, things in and getting stuff out. And then if you're integration testing, we have like uh, controller A for XAF uh, uh, example talks to controller B and then some kind of, of uh, interactions need to happen. And then if end-to-end -end testing, like uh, easy test, uh, where you simulate the clicks from each individual user. So um, everything nice, everything fine, but that's not the end of the testing pyramid. There is no 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 load testing. There is nothing you can do about uh, performance degradation or something like this. So you really really have to to think more broad. So firing some kind of crazy shit and and and, and bombarding your system, especially for web, uh, bombarding your database and do do it all kinds of performance tests and stuff like this. And you end up with more testing code than production code. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the thing nowadays. And if you think of microservices and services talking to other services and all the, all the kind of integration stuff, and, and then you end with, oh, and all my tests are slow, and then I have to mock everything out so I don't hit the database and blah, 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 blah. Testing is hard, um, but we have to do it because you make a small change and you say, okay, uh, let's do uh, a, a small sum up. For the, it's, like, it's like a link query where you say, okay, take hundreds, thousands of records and sum that up or let's do that at the database. Can you catch that? Did you catch the, the, the testing strategy? So, um, hey, Manuel, don't scare them. Don't scare them. Testing is hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Testing important. is hard. It's testing is hard. It's important. And again, like, uh, there is also that uh, trade off. We cannot test everything. But the main user cases, the main functionality, that definitely has to be included in your unit and your functional testing. Should, 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 we, should we go for? CI CD first and then skip to testing, or should we do uh, testing first? Because that we, we can definitely do that. We can definitely do that. Actually, so, the, the, the plan was uh, we're going to discuss about the, the importance of testing and DevOps, and because DevOps gives you the, the opportunity to give value to, the, to your user right away. You don't have to wait all those long cycles that we had before. You right away can ship it. And one thing that is also important, you need to know that you should test your code. SAF is taking care of all their code. They are testing all their side. Don't test those ones, please. Dave, and, Dave, Dave your best comment ever is, is testing for pussies. Yes. Yeah, that, that was so funny. So, <laughs> <laughs> that, nice, nice. So uh, again, so I wanted to, because, uh, one of the things like let's say your testing has, are failing and let's see if i can make this transition testings are failing you need to find out where is it failing you need to find out what controller is happening what problem is it having they have a great control module that will help you with that and if you don't know about that control management module 
prepared to be amazed. That has saved me, saved me for more than once in a, a, a application that I have. So uh, Dave, if you want to take over, I want to stop sharing my screen so you can quickly uh, talk about that. Sure, absolutely. How was my transition? Did I make it? That's smooth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to go screen two here. So I'm just going to create a uh, simple application and put a really bad controller in here. So I'm calling this my broken project. Uh, originally, I wrote this module for Windows only. It kind of worked in web. I've made some changes now, so it does behave in web. Um, I'm much better now. So uh, let's just stick with those. And so we ran across an issue years ago where uh, an application just started misbehaving. We didn't know why. Um, we knew we had added something. We just didn't know what it was we added uh, or if what we added was affected by something we'd added previously. So let me add uh, just a quick business object here. First name, last name, that's all we need. Check my connection string. All right, we're good. We're going to our local DB. That's fine. So what we ended up doing originally when we had this problem was we started pulling out controllers. We literally went to every single controller and commented it out until we finally found the issue. And that took a long time, uh, was disruptive and oh, fantastic. Let me go to uh, SQL Express. Um, you're prone to errors that way. You're, you may remove something from your project you didn't intend to, comment something out and then un uncomment it twice, uh, that kind of thing. So we built this little controller management module that allows you to turn on and off controllers at runtime. And it's a really easy way to go and diagnose what controller might be causing that issue. Okay. Hey, welcome to the demo effect. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was running SQL earlier today. That wasn't a problem. Let me... Uh... Hey, Dave, I had a talk uh, this Saturday on a Spanish talk in a conference. And in the in, in starting the conference, my computer stopped getting the audio. So no headphones, nothing. So oh, wow. we have to switch in uh, live with like 400, 500 people watching. We have to switch to my phone. So my presentation, the slides, I couldn't even see it. It was that small. And wow, it worked out. I did it the best that I could. <laughs> but again, the demo gods, when they don't want to help you, you are done. Well, I'm going to go ahead and blame SQL on this one because I didn't actually change anything. I uh, just ran it again and up it comes. <laughs> so all good. All good. Uh, so I'm going to create a new client here. We'll call it Bob Smith. Right, quick and easy. I'll open this up. It's lightning fast. Let's go ahead and add a bad controller. So I'm going to go ahead in. My bad controller. Of course, you can use a uh, one of the templates if you're adding controllers, right? Add a view controller. Uh, I'm just going to do a simple class-based one. And I'm going to make this on detail views only. We had that. Uh, we had that the uh, last time I was uh, I was there. So get uh, and check this. Uh, the last community stand-up I was on, so it's a, for two months ago, to have to, the difference between view controller and the generic one, so. Mm. Okay, so I've thrown in a five second sleep on this um, just to prove that this is not the desired effect. And while this seems far-fetched that somebody would put it in a sleep like this, uh, people do the equivalent thing of uh, the wait time based on uh, loading up external data synchronously rather than asynchronously. So in this case, if I double click on this, we get to wait five seconds. 
and something's clearly wrong. So you may have added this controller uh, then and the service doesn't behave, you know, a couple months down the road and you're going, why, why isn't this here? So to diagnose this, I've actually created uh, the NuGet package. I call it NuGet or Nugget, I call it NuGet. Let me, oops. Manage. There we go. And if we look for, if we just do Llama Chant, you'll see our controller management module sitting here. So I'm going to add that into the dot module project. It is platform agnostic. And this actually only runs um, if you're in debug mode and the debugger is attached. So you can have it in your production app at, at all times if you want to. Let me go to our module.cs. And like you would add any, any module, uh, you can drag it in from the toolbox. There we go, toolbox. So controller management.module shows up here. So click and drag that into our required modules. And that is it. So we'll run that again. Perfect. So same thing, it still takes five seconds to open something. When I go up to the tools, nope, where did it go? Hey now, there's that demo effect again. Let me it's try in. that again, yeah. Controller management module, it is in there. So I, I see we're having some discussion on the chat and uh, Juan Santiago has said that we are developers and that's why we had tested. I want to give my two cents quickly. And I have some friends working at Microsoft and they actually are the deprecating the tester role. The developer and the tester thing is the same one. So the developer need to have in mind when they're writing the code, how are they going to develop the test or the other way around when you're doing, before doing your code, doing your test, because that will save a lot of hassle on the disconnection when you're doing tests. I don't know, I'm sorry to interrupt Dave, I'm gonna let you continue quickly. I don't know if Dennis can uh, add on the chat how Dev Express is doing it, but definitely uh, the friends that I have in Microsoft, the, the, the tester team and the development team is just one right now. It's not both like it was before. Please continue Dennis, uh, Dave, sorry. No problem. Uh, my controller's not showing up. That's fantastic. Rather than diagnose that, I'm going to pull this out. I'm just going to grab the project directly. Uh, Dave, ch check uh, module.designer.cs to make sure it's... Oh, that's true. Save, that. Save all. <laughs> yeah. Try that. It is That's in there. there. Yeah, yeah. It, now it's there. <laughs> we didn't check earlier. <laughs> I tried this in two other applications before we did this, and it worked fine. So of course, it's the uh, it's the demo effect. Dave, you are okay. the first doing a demo, so expect for us when we're trying ours that it will have the same type of issue. So yeah, right. And again, I always right. like when I see someone that I look up to and they're having the same issues that I have. So I feel, I feel, I feel like, okay, it's not only me. <laughs> my, my demo actually was broken this morning that um, I said I will clean up my desktop because I have a huge mess. So I will hide all the icons and put it in a folder that is called before the meetup right. so I can take them off after that. And then my demo stopped working. So I need to figure it out that I changed some folder routes. And that's why you need testing, basically. Because you don't know when you're going to move anything else that will break your code. Sometimes, lately, I've been doing tests and I thought, like, I didn't even touch that. How, how come it's broken? It's like the path, permissions, roles, you name it. So but that's, that, that's, that, that's the thing with such a complicated uh, uh, set up like with, with uh, uh, Visual Studio, 
uh, where you have plugins and all that kind of stuff and nougats and that just kept throwing every in every piece of code a blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. It's really 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 hard to test that stuff in a, in a nice patient way so you don't uh, get out of control. Uh, actually, I mean, there is some discussion in the chat about testing. Getting already. Well, this is the topic all, of the. All this, over is the, the stuff. this is the topic of the of this yeah. era. But uh, what I want to yes. say is that, uh, I mean, I know that all type of testing will be good for the project, but I think that the one that will be more common will be like the integration testing, because you really want to see how the stuff talks to each other. Because yeah. the unit test, you no, get the function, no. and then there it just... is. There it is. There it is. We there it is. There it is. Oh, it's working. Good. good. I was just making time. <laughs> Sorry for that. Bye. Oh, good. Yeah. So I'll I'll switch around then the uh, then you get package, but um, this is here. Uh, so I it's included my project in the Visual Studio um, solution, and then just dragged it on like I normally would. If I open up the show controller settings, it's going to take five seconds because it's showing a view. Same problem, perfect. So I've modified this now so we only show custom controllers. Basically, uh, you can come in here and just turn things on and off. So I get rid of that one, and then you have to reproduce the view. So I close this, I reopen it, now it's instant. Nice. So it's a great way to turn off uh, controllers individually, figure out what, what controller is problematic. Uh, there is an option to show all controllers, including the DevExpress controllers. Uh, there's an option in here to enable or disable all custom controllers. So if you have hundreds in there, you don't have to click them one by one. You just click it and they all turn off or all turn back on. And same thing for selection. If you had a bunch selected, um, you can just disable them or re-enable them. Yeah, perfect. That's awesome. So that's I, awesome. I have used it uh, before and it's definitely awesome. Maybe it looks simple now, but that functionality, so you have a lot of controllers that are on the same view, a lot of things working, and you can say, okay, deactivate all mind controllers. Okay, it's not my issue. Let me search for it. Oh, yes, it's my issue. Let's find which one is. Let's deactivate one by one. It's definitely a time saver and a huge, huge uh, uh, productivity booster. So I would definitely Dave, recommend this is a great model. Dave, I, I had a... I had projects with like 4,000 controllers or something like this. And it's like uh, in completely spread out on, 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 on 20 or 40 modules. And uh, that would be awesome if I had that back then. Hmm. I had a similar thing with like environment variables. But I had to restart all over uh, the, the, the whole application all over again. So that's a, a really, 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 really nice touch on, on diagnosing on single controllers. <laughs> well, is, there, I... is, there, is there currently a way to uh, see the, how long a controller needs to activate? So that's what I was actually just about to mention. That'd be something to be really nice if the DevExpress team added to the diagnostic info that yeah. you get the yeah. diagnostic actions is how long did the, each controller take to activate um, to process once the view controllers are created uh, yeah. and, the, and the deactivation of all three of those. If we got those metrics, uh, that would be really handy to show. Yeah. Because yeah. then you can identify this controller is taking 5, 10, 15 seconds to load up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I tried to do that myself, but without recreating the frames and the, you know, the actual uh, underlying controller itself, yeah, I couldn't yeah. come up with a good way to do it. So, yeah, uh, yeah. maybe we'll add that as a suggestion. That, uh, Dennis can yeah, take back uh, the team and. I, I okay, noted. We did, we did these. Well, noted. We... That, that, that's 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 awesome, Dennis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Noted. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, we were, uh, Dave, like, you know that we did the same. I mean, we, I mean, Javier, we were having a problem with one project. And Javier told me they have something for this. So we use it. But at that moment, we were more interested on knowing how long it takes to load a view controller. Yeah. Because yeah. we want to identify which one was the one who was making the screen slow so in the end like javier did some magic he used your module and then we move a lot of stuff because 
It's okay. easy to throw a lot of stuff in the unactivated method of the view control. And it's like, oh, it's, I can do here like all the time, like read like 10,000 records and do a calculation for one number. But if you do it that too much, your application will be like really slow. <laughs> so I think, I mean, we really love your solution. I think it's amazing. Actually, it's like uh, one of the best ideas that I ever seen uh, for debugging somehow. Uh, besides that, well, developers say they have a lot of information, good information for, for debugging, but uh, this is a lifesaver, especially if you're a beginner, where you don't know uh, if the controller is activated or not, or why it's activated or why it's so slow. So I think that for people who is starting, this is an amazing way to figure out how it's working. Yeah, and uh, yeah. as Adam uh, pointed out on the chat, not only which controller is being problematic, sometimes you have a controller that is being activated in the ground view. It shouldn't be mm. activated in this view, and you can find out with that model, so that's perfect. Dave, can you, can you, can you know, uh, show again the, the uh, controller settings view? Is the, okay, so, so it's just that that's just a list of the controllers you have in your solution. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, it, it doesn't point out any any uh, problematic controllers uh, that are more than 20 milliseconds uh, to activate or something like this. Yeah, not not currently. Like I said, if, if we can okay. get some yeah, of that, yeah, that information yeah, yeah. Uh, logged at the lower level, then for sure. Or yeah. maybe at some point we can do a twist together and fix it together mm -hmm. as, a, as a community. So, yeah. okay, so I, perfect. Uh, that's amazing. Again, it, it really has saved my life more than once. I don't know if you want to add anything. I like never you. saw that before, and I, I really, really, really like this. That's really, yeah. really cool thing. It is, it is. Know. It's also uh, it's working for the ASP. Uh, where's where I go? Sorry, Dennis, go you want to repeat? Dennis, Dennis go on. Uh, I just wanted to ask uh, if you use uh, the build team diagnostic action that allows you to uh, determine I do. which actions are active on. All, all, the, all the time, but uh, the, the thing is with the diagnostic action is like uh, for, for actions and controllers, it's like it's real, very good in, 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 hey, this controller is inactive or active, uh, but for this kind of stuff, where you're like, uh, I am trying to diagnose why my controller conflicts with another controller or why it doesn't behave like, like it, it behaves. Uh, there is much of improvement over the di diagnostic action, I guess. At, at least uh, in, my, in, my, in my perspective. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't compare them. Uh, yeah. I just asking for, for example, when uh, we tried to uh, see this uh, uh, Dave's uh, action, we could use uh, this diagnostic action to determine why why it's not showing up. Yeah, why it why it isn't showing up is is for sure. But uh, he. Uh, 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 um, uh, uh, deactivated the controller on the fly and made the performance impact go away. So you can do some kind of, 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 of triaging where you can say, okay, we uh, deactivate those controllers or these new controllers we added and can try to do yeah, some performance analysis. I think analysis. that the point of view will change. If you're a beginner, you might want yeah. to know why uh, the, con the action is not showing, maybe it's the wrong view, the wrong type, or so on. But, but the, the beginners is always nice. I, I always tell my students that, okay, use this when you cannot figure it out, why your controller is not showing, why your action is not showing. But uh, actually what we did with the module was like to check performance. It's like, let's deactivate yeah. this and see if yeah. it's faster. Yeah. And if yeah. it's faster, let's go and check the, con the source of the controller to see what it's doing. Because it's usually the unactivated or the activated method that is doing something that is loading too much data. You're asking too much stuff. So yep. I think that the how you see it is different. Like I will use Dave for performance most of the time. I will say like because I've been using SAF for long. Uh, but if you're a beginner, I will say that the diagnostic tools is amazing. And again, I always tell my students like 
you want to figure it out, go and put that and check and you will see why it's not activated. Because the first problems that you have is like, you cannot understand which view it is or which type it is. Yep, or yep, the yep. most common question that we have is that I put this on the list view, why it's not showing? Yeah, yep, it's, yep. it's nested. It's master yeah. detail. So the list view that you want, you think that you're doing is not that one. It's the nested one. It's the name of the master, the name of the detail. So you're putting it in the wrong view, basically. Okay, so guys. Okay, guys. We, approach. we have 50 minutes and we have a lot of more demos. So we definitely uh, can follow up on all of this. And uh, definitely, uh, one, one, the only thing that I will say about the diagnostic uh, controller, and I do use it in all of the projects, at least when I'm in the debugging phase, in the web version, the memo field is too small. We always have to increase that one because the, the behavior by default, it doesn't let you read the whole thing. That's the only thing that after that, it gives you a lot of nice information. So let me share my screen and move forward because we want to do three more demos and have some discussion about some topics. So my demo, I'm gonna do it right now, the CI CD, and it will be fast. I won't I, I thought I was going to do it from beginning to end, but I just wanna show the steps and then we move forward to the next one and we will go on because I want to get to the questions at the end because one thing that I want to keep is like we're trying to uh, hey, answer every question hours. that we have in the chat, in the Facebook group. We want to answer everyone, even if it's just, hey, we're going to follow up later. This is my recommendation. So let's quickly, let's see, let's quickly review my CI CD sample. Simple, simple one. We are just going to show one thing that we're going to do. So I have this uh, soft blazer app. Size uh, UI shortener. So if we have a big, uh, I don't know, anyone, a big uh, URL and we want to get a short URL, I use SAF for everything that I can think of. Everything that I want, that I have on my mind, this is my first uh, thing, SAF. So we have a small link that we can then use. So this is completely SAF Blazor. And the only thing that I did here was hiding the menus, hiding all actions, and putting my own actions. That's it. And open a detail view. Nothing else. So I have that run in my, my CI CD. So if you check here, we have we, we, we are in the Azure DevOps. The only thing that we have to do is create a new project. And then in the new project, we go to pipelines and we create a, a new pipeline, let's say, and we go to and get our GitHub account set up and we get our repository and everything else. So after we have our pipeline, of course, this is a Blazor a server, so we just Let's check our YAML. We decide that we're going to do a application on a ASP.NET, and we're gonna we can say here we're gonna have our agent is gonna be a Ubuntu, a Linux, it will be a Windows, it will be everything or build configuration. And again, I know that YAML might sound scary, but we have all the tasks here. So if we want to do a Nugget restore, we have the task here that we can configure and add that YAML to our pipeline. We can do or everything that we want. So right here we have our VM, we have our configuration, then we're gonna install the .NET that with the core in that machine that we want. Then we're gonna restore our nuggets. And for Dev Express, this is an important part. How do we need to integrate our nugget feed into that continuous integration system? And the way to do it that is we get a nugget config. And again, uh, I always give credit where credit is due. The one that I learned this for from when I was starting CI CD DevOps things like I don't know a few uh, years back was Manuel Manuel who's the one who sit with me and walk me through all of this and then from there on it, it, this has been a time saver a life saver a lot of things so thank you Manuel for that so we have to create a nugget config in our in our uh, and let me see if I yeah I have it open but in my other monitor we I create a nugget config in my solution right here and then with that one over there our new config will be sorry something like this we're going to say where is our package source we're going to put our new nugget or api uh, nugget feed from dev express with our api key and we're good to go so and we have to let them know where is our uh, nugget config in our uh, application after that it's just building the project publishing the app and one thing that i is struggle a little bit here was to find we need to publish these artifacts so we'll be able to take these artifacts to our continuous deployment. With that out of the way, then we can go to a release and create a new release pipeline 
And in that one, if we check, it's simple. This one is even easier. We just add our artifacts from our uh, build that we just did. And we check here, what is the artifact? What is the uh, latest uh, version that we want? So when we run, it will back. We activate it here or continuous deployment trigger and we add the stage. So in this case, I have this deployed to an Azure service. So right here we say, we're gonna deploy to Azure service. It's gonna be a web app on Windows. This is the service that I already created on my Azure service. And this is the, the location of the zip file that I'm bringing. So with that, and of course you have to authenticate with your Azure subscription and everything. With that, you can create a release there already. And because our pipeline here is already, let me click on it and it uh, triggers. Things are dying over here. <laughs> yeah, so because what triggers are for every uh, continuous integration, every commit to the master or every pull request, after you get that one, it will trigger a build on the machine and then it will go to the release. And if we see, we are enabled the continuous integration the continuous deployment. And this is a really simple example. We are not adding here, for example, uh, Jose will be doing a demo of unit test and easy test. We can add all those intermediate steps so you can easy test, unit test, and do everything that you need. And you can have pre-deployment condition, post-deployment condition. You have approval because you don't want to go to production directly. You have all those steps that give you complete control of the, of the pipeline of your things. So if you see we have here, no menu, no, just no list view, just edited view directly. This is the power of SAF and we have this that we can still be changing here. So I'm gonna come back to my app and I'm going to, uh, and I think I did it. This is not committed yet, but I did it here, I think. So this is a quick CSS that I'm going to commit to save. I'm going, I don't want this to be, I ah, no, it's right here. Sorry, I have another one. I'm gonna comment this out. I'm going to do a commit. And I'm going to do a push. And I'm going to stop sharing. We are going to continue with the demonstration. And in around five minutes, 10 minutes, we're going to come back to my app. And I can, I can actually even show you if we go to pipelines right here. Let's wait for the pipeline to see that it's just now. It just started to build. We're going to see how it completely builds. Then we can go to the release, see how I completely do the release, and then we can come back to our app and see how the deployment completely is good to go. I don't know you guys, but the first time that I sit down with Manuel, because I've been wanting to do DevOps, and we worked through all of this, and I did it by myself, and he, I did a commit, and I checked my application. And it was not Blazor, I wanted to show Blazor, it was a soft web, and everything was deployed. I was like, boom. I get excited with, those, with this thing, so <laughs> again. So uh, I don't know if anyone else wants to add anything else, but if not, I'll stop sharing and uh, Jose can take care of the unit testing, easy test, and then we come back to, I will even send the link to Jose so in the middle of his demo, he can show that the app is already completely deployed. Perfect. So I guess it's my turn. I will try to be fast because we still are missing like Manuel's demo. So one sec, let me share my screen. Machines within machines within machines. So I really don't know where these screens are. So one second. Uh, um, share screen, I want to share. Uh, let's desktop. It will look back for a second. Uh, let's move to the virtual machine. And here we go. <clears throat> okay. Um, I don't know if, can you see my screen, Javier? Like, is it okay? Yes, yeah, yeah we can. There. Yeah. Okay, so basically, this is one project that we did for one of, you. Uh, it was one of our latest training session on May. So they were moving from uh, from Entity Framework to, to XPO. So they wanted to see like, hey, how can we do it? How can we test it? So basically what I told them is like, okay, listen, uh first you need to define your xpo layer like your persistent classes so you do that in a different assembly so you have this assembly then you have here like your persistent classes then you have this xpo helper that you will find in hundreds of 
uh, example from Developer Express that this is just in charge of updating the schema. And well, there is nothing new here. So <clears throat> I told them like, well, if you want to uh, make your stuff like agnostic, well, you create a separate assembly, you create your ORM, you create your classes there. And then basically where when, with your business logic, you can create a, a class that contains your um, your business logic. It can be a static class. I will advise against it. I mean, don't use a static uh, because if you're using dependency injection, you can do it even better. But this is like a really simple, simple case. So here is the um, logic. So it's like create some invoice or customer and so on. So the logic is really simple. You don't have to even think about it. But what I want to show is like, okay, this is a net standard um, assembly. It, it has reference to persistent base implementation and XPO. And beside that, then I reference this in my SAF project, but in this case, I want to show the test, not the SAF project. So uh, the idea is that you have your ORM, then you have your test project. And in your test project, you can do like several stuff. I pick the one that I think that are most important and that most people will use. So let's start with the business logic test. Uh, first, let's check the test project. So the test project only contains uh, reference to the conditional appearance module, the base implementation, XPO. These are related to the, the testing, basically. Uh, and you need the test adapter and the test SDK. So let's go to the business object test. So this is really easy. Uh, this is like a test class. Um, basically, you create your scenario and there is a, a huge discussion how you should name your test. In this case, it's only named like test business object, but you should put something more meaningful for you. So in general, it's like I create a in-memory data store. Then basically, I update the schema with the XPO helper. And then I just use my class that I create with the logic like I suggest you to put the logic not in the controller, but in a separate class. You can instance that inside of the controller and then you can test it outside without having to do all the flow. So here your business logic, you just create a customer. In this case, I'm creating myself. Then I create an invoice and then I check uh, that the count is one because I want to show that yeah, I really create one invoice. So in this case, uh, I'm not testing what XPO is doing. I'm testing actually what the create invoice method is doing. So you need to make sure in your test that is somehow difficult at the beginning to not test someone else code. That code is supposed to be tested already. So don't create tests that do the unit of work and check if it, it's commit. They already check that. So you have to test your own logic. So in this case, it's like, okay, I have just one invoice. So I'm expecting that I will get one invoice and the count will be one. So this is like one of the most simple scenarios, but it's good when you are like doing tests for your data. So let's run this. Jose, if you have a second, open the link that I sent you because that's done. Okay, oh, the it's, it's done. Is okay. done. Uh, one second. So let's see. Uh, this stop sharing. No, the chat. no. Oh, you send it in, in WhatsApp. Yeah, that is outside. So you. Okay, uh, I will send it on the chat. Yeah, that will be better. So okay. So the test pass. So we know that the business logic is working regarding the the XPO objects. So let me know when the the, the you send the link so I can open. I did. It. I did. Okay, open so on the chat. Let's see. Hold on, uh, the chat and this. Yeah, if you say now there is a menu, now There's there is navigation. navigation and we didn't do anything. Everything was through continuous integration, continuous deployment. And, it, and feel free to use the site live. There is a nice way to just have a short link for your projects or anything else. Please continue, Jose, continue. Okay, uh, so I will go back to the demo. And <clears throat> okay, then uh, the second thing that I want to show that is the second easiest one, I will say, is the validation test. Um, so here we do some stuff. On the setup, we do create an object space provider. 
to be able to access data basically. So uh, after you have the object space, in this case, it's in, we are not connecting to the real database, it's in memory. So basically here is the test. Uh, we create a customer with the object space, then we create a rule set, then with the rule set, we tell it validate target and we pass the object space that originated that object, the customer, and then the default context. In this case, the context is like save, but it can be like a string. Any of your custom co context can be used here. So after that, we assert if the object is in the state that we wanted. And to do that, what we do is like from the results, we go and get the result of the exact rule that we're testing. So we get it by ID. So I'm passing here, this is a string that is the ID of the rule that I want to check. And then I'm checking the state. So for the states, these are the states that we have. Uh, let's see the huh. type. Sorry. Uh, also, yeah. Yep. No, no, I'm just saying after your demo show the article from Dev Express about how to be a unit test in 10 days that it has a lot yeah. of. Uh, uh, actually, if you can help me with that in the meantime to get it because I, yeah. I wanted to show you, but I don't have it on hand. So the results that you will get is valid, skip or invalid. So you have to assert against those values. So in this case, I'm hoping that, see the assert is, is equal to invalid. I want this test test to fail actually if it's invalid is the test is good so then i'm doing the opposite um uh the the rule requires the name to be written on the name property so then i do the opposite i put the name i uh, execute the validation again and i check if the state is in this case i'm checking that is valid you should do this on separate tests but for the purpose of this video, I do, did it like this because I wanted to show it like quite fast. So what I'm going to do is, well, let's uh, run this one. Okay, so in the first case, this didn't stop there because actually this uh, passed. So the state, uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know if, well, I cannot see it here, but the state in this case was invalid. So it's moving forward, otherwise it will stop there. So we get what we expected to be invalid. And then what we are going to do is like, actually we're going to write the name. We are expecting that this value is not null. And then we check if it's valid and the test will actually pass. So, Let's continue. And here you will see that it has passed. So believe me, this looks like no sense at the beginning. Like, oh, I will just write the code. I know that I'm good. I'm doing it. It's, I, I'm amazing. But after the, let's say that you work in one project on January, uh, January 2, you start working on a new project. You finish on February. And then a customer give you a call in December for some changes. So believe me, you will not remember what you wrote. So it's better to have all the scenarios already in the test. So it's like, okay, I will handle that change that you want. And you do it, uh, and then you run the test. Because you will say, like, oh, it's, not, it's like one line. It will be like easy. But that line can break your entire system. So if you have this, this will pay off greatly on time. It's like, there is no a uh, way for me to express how much time testing have saved me already since I started. And I started last year in November. And I strongly advise, like when you design your system, do it like this, do the test first and do all the, uh, all the cases in code. Then to create your application will be like a walk on the park. It will be like really easy because you have the scenarios already, you just run them all the time. And this is way faster to do this than to ask someone, go on to that menu, open this view, put this value and save and see how it goes. That takes forever. So this you can like run it and you will say, oh, it passed, it's good, let's move forward. 
So actually, we're going to move forward after this. Should, 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 I, should I interrupt you because you are right now in TDD mode? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Manuel. So, um, OK, that's the easy or the standard way of going into testing mm -hmm. or uh, at least um, some kind of testing. Mm -hmm. uh, you did a lot of plumbing there with of object space and uh, object uh, actually, provider this is not, and setup. This is, and, this is not that big. If, all we, the, if we check the one from conditional appearance, it's a little bit bigger. Uh, I I I don't 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 care about how big it is or how 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 it's structured. The thing is, with all that kind of plumbing, that's exactly the idea where Tasty gets its. No, I'm from. looking. I actually I'm looking forward to move to Tasty. So yes, yeah. I I I am I'm 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 sitting there to 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 get a. Uh, uh, Nice you're getting you're getting anxious, anxious. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so because we we have like thirty three uh, or something, uh, thirty minutes left. So. Yeah, I, I actually, I will finish like this like quite fast. Uh, yeah. Just I want to say that everything that I did here, I get from the Developer Express blog. Yeah. For, for yeah. a while, Dennis was posting a lot of things about testing. Yeah. And I wanted yeah. to go into that. I put the link and, on the uh, chat. I, if you can pull it up just quickly. Yeah, and I was thinking like, I want to move to, to this is the next step. I mean, as developer, you go like first, you copy everything from a Stack Overflow. <laughs> then you do your own testing, you run your own code, then you create your own nugget. And then the last step I will say is like you do testing and then you move forward in life. It's like, this is how you make a product. Yeah, yeah but, but that, that, that's, that's exactly the, the thing I, I'm not happy with because I am a testing expert. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the thing is like, you have this all that virtual setup code that's floating around and, and, and it's like uh when did, does that happen and and, and and it's it's not that bad it, no but, i mean like uh, for me i was coming from no test at all to yeah. some test so this was is like i cannot imagine like because sometimes a customer call is like jose can you change this it's like yeah one minute but it's broken. So, yeah, but but that's uh, the... this this is like good enough when you don't have anything. I guess it's the first step, and I think that the documentation that Developer Express put out there, it is amazing. I mean, remember that you have to. I mean, you have one case is yours, Manuel. You're like uh, every time that I read your your post, I learn like ten new stuff. It, it, it's 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 not criticizing mm -hmm. this style of 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 testing. I I say it's it's way too complicated. That, that, that no, it, like... it is. That's why people don't want to go into testing. Yeah. I yeah. think that exactly what I'm showing is like why you don't want to go into that. Because for example, in some other cases, I have to have shared classes like base taste classes where I do all the setup. Yeah. Because I don't yeah. want to do it all over again every time. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. of course it makes sense, but. I would say that if you have nothing, to have this is a lot. It's and it's it's better than, than than everything you have. Yeah, it, it's better than us like go here, click there, and so on. That will take forever. So yeah. Uh, okay, the next test is like different. In this case, we're going to test a conditional appearance. Uh, so we did this example for one reason. I think that when you have an application, you have to test your B business object logic. Like, what will happen if I do the invoice? Will the uh, accounts payable increase, for example. That's what I'm looking for. That was the first example, like really simple. You just do it at XPO level. The second example was testing the validation rules. So in that sense, it's also like, it's not that complicated. But this will be the conditional appearance, will be something that is oriented to the UI. That takes forever because you need to go, make the, con uh, open the application, navigate to the view, make the scenario and then you will see oh then the the due amount is red um, yeah. that's kind of complicated it takes a lot of time so in this case what we're doing is like we are creating an object space provider then we are creating a module then we are creating um, an application also the application is here it's called test application uh, this application inherits from <coughs> staff application, so it's not oriented to any 
to any platform. It's not the web or the Windows. It's just the logic way to do it. So in here we have the module, the application, and the object space provider. After that, what we do is like we create an object. Then we create a fake uh, target. So this target, you will see this code in the developer express blog. It's like they tell you like, okay, since you cannot see the UI in this case, you need to create a target that implements the interfaces that hold the state of the of the of the appearance rule. So you can see if it's apply or not. So then you have, I guess I will change the name. I in this case, the name is fake target appearance. I, I think I copy paste it from, from the developer express website. But when you see fake, <laughs> you start doubting it. So maybe like dummy or something like that or test appearance target. Actually, we have one, we have encapsulated all these on nuggets. So we have like one target that is called test target actually. And then we create the appearance controller. We put it over the detail view that we just created. And that is set up, as Manuel uh, said before, this sounds complicated and it takes a while to figure out, okay, I need to create the object space provider, the application, the module, and then the controller. But anyway, uh, going, going back to the test, um, is uh, something Dennis, like this. Dennis, Dennis, yeah, Dennis, uh, Dennis was, go ahead. Was... Uh, yeah, I just wanted to comment uh, this piece of code. Um, this is actually not unit test. It's no, a functional test. test. Yeah, it's an, yeah it's, an, it, it's an integration test. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we next in XF code we we also have such tests, but we try to avoid them as much as we can. And for these uh, scenarios, uh, it's where easy tests can uh, help and save you. Yeah, uh, actually, in after this, I will show easy test. Uh, I wanted to show this one because this was new for me. So in this case, it's like okay now. But, we have, but let's try to let's try to move it to move it along quickly. Because yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay, sorry. <laughs> basically, no, no. The, the the idea is something like this: it's like we have the application created on code, the view created on code, everything created on code. So then we can like set the value to the class. For example, like when it's active, you will change something; the color will be different. So then we. Tell the controller, controller refresh the appearance of this target item. That will be, in this case, we have this fake target item, but it should be an editor, something like that, or one part of the view. And then we check if it's enabled. I mean, if the target applies actually that um, uh, that uh, appearance rule. So in this case, as Dennis said, this is actually not unit testing. Uh, is uh, what we call actually, I think we call it here in the office integration test. So it's, it's like it's we want to figure test, out yeah. if our business logic is actually working. And that is the part that you will do as a developer because you're not developing the code of SAF. You have, don't have to unit test SAF. They are doing an amazing job already doing that. This is regarding your own business logic and your own line of business problem. So it's an integration test because you also want to see how everything talks. Um, okay, I connect to the database, the test database, whatever that is. H Jose, the, 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 the main thing that your, your tests are telling is like, a, uh, if it's active, make it red. Mm -hmm. If it's, uh, or it make it green. If it's unactive uh, or not active, make it not green. Yeah, and for um, that, usually you use a human. It's like, go and check yeah. if the rule is working. Yeah. And that takes uh, an awful amount of time. And, 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 and the thing is, this is an integration test because there are several things going on, like creating an object space and then creating mm -hmm. some data and, and all that kind of stuff. That's all, uh, that setup block is like huge. Yeah, actually, if you see the setup, it's bigger than the test. Yeah. And the thing about it is, should you write integration tests against XAF? Uh, you can, mm -hmm. you should, but the thing is, there is some overhead and cost to do that. 
because you have to to do the data layer stuff and uh, yeah, all, 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 all the setup is quite heavy, but yeah. we try to do it like encapsulated, so it will be easier for yeah. people to write. So, okay, so if you so, if you so want for, to do for for, for, this, for, sorry, for uh, them for them is it's it's like uh, this is a perfect example of writing uh, uh, an easy test because it's a functional test. Exactly. So, yeah. Uh, actually, I will uh, run. Uh, okay, but without uh, but without the UI that uh, with, yeah. without the UI part. Uh, the thing is that uh, without the UI, it's somehow like faster, I think. Yeah. So uh, I just run the test. The test was asserted. It was good. Again, this is an integration test, as Denis said. That this is not unit test. In unit test, you create your class and then you you test method by method, and sometimes you have to fake some part of the of the flow because you cannot go there basically. So this case is for more for like business scenario. You want to see if your calculation was good, if your rule was applied. You can do easy tests for that. And uh, actually this test run uh, is good. So uh, this is for me, I will say like, if you're not doing anything regarding tests, but manual tests, like open the screen yourself and go in and check, move to this. Uh, this might not be like, the best way or the most smart way to do it but believe me it will help you it will save you a huge amount of time during test uh, stages and when you when your customer comes again in one year and asks you for something you do that something you just run the test and that will be easy money because you actually if the change is just one line you will change one line and you don't have to spend three hours making sure that that line was working if you have your your uh, integration test, so Jose, mm -hmm. one 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 uh, uh, one thing you had you could use name off for view item and max credit. Oh yeah, of of course. I yeah. mean, this can be improved like in many ways, but yeah. sometimes the the customers that we have for training, uh, they struggle a lot with the .NET infrastructure. When you show the name off, it's like, what yeah. does that mean? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because yeah. you have developers in all type of levels. Like, for example, we have some customers that they move from COBOL to SAF. I, I, Can you I, imagine I, how it is for them? I, I'm, I'm just building some ground up for Tasty. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so uh, for example, like, imagine you're moving from COBOL to .NET and XAF. So if you have to explain what the name of is, it's like, okay, like, let's forget it, but use this, uh, it's practical, it's easy, and it's better than having nothing. And it will yep. save you a lot of time, and I can tell you this in a personal matter. The more tests you do, the more free time you will have in the future. So do it for your future self, not do it for yourself from right now. So, sure. uh, okay, so to uh, finish this, uh, then he says something that for that you can use easy test. Yes, you can use easy test. But the thing is that, Easy test is, is text based. So if I do it in code, I can refactor. And because, you know, Mark Miller, he's the god of code rush and refactoring and stuff like that. So I use code rush a lot. I basically, I cannot write anything without code rush. So in, if you do it like this, you can refactor anything and it will just work. Like 99% of the time, you know that computer science is not like that. So, okay, let's move to easy test. That's the, depending on which type of person you are, you will use easy test or this type of test that is integration test in code. So for that, it's really easy. When you create a SAF application, uh, you will have this uh, functional test folder. And in here, it will come like with this sample test. This sample test just uh, open your application and helps you to log in and then it finish. So this test is, uh, I don't know how they did this. I guess they used the recorder or they wrote it. It's like quite simple. So to run this type of test, you just go here and then you just click run. And this will actually open the UI and do whatever it says in here, which is go, it will log in with as an admin and then it will finish. Basically it will just go to my details in the navigation. And if it finish, then the test is passed. So, we, sh we should mention here that uh, when you're setting up your easy test configuration, that config.xml mm -hmm. uh, contains an application name for both, both those application names. 
and you have to make sure those those match correctly. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, there, um, when uh, we use this a lot, a uh, long time ago in a project in El Salvador, and we have all type of problems, but it was because we didn't have the experience mm -hmm. to see like, okay, you need to, we did, I think like uh, one quest, one suggestion, if I can do, uh, tell you one advice, start, do, if you're going to use easy test or if you're going to use the integration test in code as I showed before, um, do it when your development cycle is almost over or is over. Because if you try to do it when the development cycle is active, you might do a lot of refactors and these names might not match and the yeah. test will fail. So don't do it in the middle, don't do it at the beginning, do it when your application is almost done. I think that's the time where you need to run through all of this. Okay, so as you saw, like I just run this, like uh, right click run. So you can also record the test. So if you don't want to write this line by line, Developer Express have an amazing tool that uh, is the easy test recorder that it will record everything that you're doing in your application. For example, here I'm logging in. Almost everything. It's yeah, uh, almost, some of uh, uh, comments uh, uh, must be written. Uh, everything that is necessary, I would say, or almost everything. So here you can come here and then you can create a new record. Uh, and this will be Manuel in this case. And his max grade will be like $10,000 because we trust this guy. Thank so you. we save this. <laughs> and there is and it fails. <laughs> and it fails. Sorry. Sorry, Manuel, I cannot give you that amount of money. But what I want to show here is that uh, I can, what I'm doing is being recorded. So I can see the script. See, like we navigate to that view, we fill the form, we put in the name Manuel in the max rate 1,000, and then we try to save and close. So, Damn it. <laughs> so this is what you will do like for, let's say you have your use cases on like on a script. So you go and do your use cases on this, you're recording them and then you run them all the time while you're doing the development. So, um, and your build thing, machine and your build machine yeah. with your CI CD and, and your build CD. machine with your CI CD. So here I have another test. It's basically the same that we did with Manuel right now, but I record this in the morning because I wanted to have that, that is not the one, the default one. So- Only 10,000 credits are not 1,000 yeah, credits. So <laughs> in, in, in this case, uh, basically, let's see, I did some, okay. This is what I mean. So the name of the field is active, right? So I will run this test. And by the way, guys, uh, Danny has put a few articles on the chat. Feel free to check them out about debugging and testing and error handling for unit tests, about easy tests, uh, and also the in-memory provider that uh, Jose was using in his test. Uh, we should set it up on the setup in production test. So, okay, the test finished, and we can see the output it passes, but let's do something small. Let's break the test. So instead of active, it will be like without E in the end. So it will not find this field, it will break. So let's run this. And this is really neat. Uh, I actually love this. We used that a lot, like long time ago in El Salvador actually. So this test will break because it will not find this field. Hands free? Yeah, hands free. <laughs> Show your hands. And okay, it failed. And if we see the output, it's even telling you that it creates a screenshot for you or on where, where it fails. Actually, this screenshot is here. So we can see like you were in this screen and it was like this when it fails. Actually, the first fail that it need to be filled was this one and it didn't reach it. So, I mean, there are so many ways to test. I showed you some before that are made in code. This is easy test, depending on how you like to proceed or who will be handling your test. Because this, uh, I don't want to be mean, but uh, you don't have to use a developer for running this type of test. You can put an intern, a secretary, someone who knows about the business project to record the test 
and then you will have it and you can run it all the time. And again, there are different levels, different ways, but having some tests is better to have nothing at all. And believe me, when you understand that this will save you hundreds of hours in the future, you will do it. I was against it all the time. It's like, uh, yeah, I know that everyone is doing, I know that if you want to be a big guy, you need to do it like this, but it's not for big companies. You can do it as a solo developer, I strongly suggest it. And at the beginning, it will be difficult because it will, it's like too much code, extra code for nothing. But believe me, in the end, it will pay greatly. And with that, I stop my presentation because it's time to move to Manuel. Yeah, yeah so, we, do, Dave, we, Dave, we do need to Dave, move along. Uh, Dave, uh, Dave, 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 didn't you have Dave. a huge calculation issue that was safe for uh, testing with easy tests or unit tests or something like that? Yeah, let me add, let me add two things here. So we did have one that um, we were calculating contracts and when we made a minor change, very minor change, uh, it ended up breaking that calculation uh, to the point where it's not big per contract, but when you multiply that by hundreds of thousands of contracts, you're talking Jeez. about big dollars per year, uh, millions of dollars per year. So that was huge. I will say with the script recorder, it is fantastic. Uh, there is a an issue when you're recording uh, inline editable grids that it doesn't seem to behave quite the way you would expect. Uh, so you do have to go in and edit that script file manually to make some minor changes. Uh, but once you get those sorted out, it's, it's really, really handy. Uh, and easy test really did save us uh, in, in that scenario. So that was great. Okay, so Manuel, your uh, time to shine. Now it's time to shine. Okay, let's, let's, let's throw away the, the, the uh, nicotine cigarette and get the, the, the really shiny out ones. <laughs> Now, normally I, uh, I, I should have uh, done some, some really, really bad things with, with cigars, but so let's, let's so I just wanted, I wanted to show the links you, that we have on the chat just for the sufferers to check all yes. this has really good documentation about unit tests. And yes, tests. totally. I, so, I look, I, I looked at that source code today. And I was thinking about uh, doing one or two of them in in Tasty, but I I thought it was too too hazardous or, or it, it it's a little bit tricky uh, to get that uh, uh, except the last one. But I don't have a demo so for for uh, testing XAF. But I I show you uh, uh, another couple of uh, thoughts about that. Yeah, so, so I'm going to stop sharing so you can share. And again, I, I want to thank everybody that is still here with us. We have been already two hours. It's, almost, it's like two hours. Testing is a bitter pill to swallow, but it's necessary. And, uh, it's okay. and, and you guys are here with us. So again, thank you for, for sharing uh, your, your time with us. Uh -huh. Yes, and feel free to ask me any questions. I will try to answer about XAF, XP, or DevExpress, everything. So don't hesitate to post in can, chat. Can don't, you hold don't hold back. Don't hold back. Ask questions. Screen. Can I you can. see my screen? There's yeah. Delicious.net okay. testing. Yeah, that's that's nice. So uh, I have to quickly open my short presentation and and, and get me on uh, on call if I take longer than four or five minutes to do that. So, uh, da, 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 da. so I uh, have worked on several testing companies. Uh, so let's let's share my screen. Uh, and I I was working for companies called Ranorex. They are focused on UI testing, blah, 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 blah. And then I started to uh, realize I should start my own company. So it's called Xenio. So it's uh, uh, really a group of, of, of stuff that's pulled together. It's called Xenio. It's like uh, being hostile to other, or other people. So it's easy, flexible, focused. So you can pick and choose whatever you want. 
Um, and then I realized and um, that testing is really, really, really hard in .NET. So um, I came from a .NET background going to JavaScript land with, with like, Electron and, and, and doing all kinds of crazy stuff cross-platform. And there is a stuff that, that uh, a, a thing that, that um, Facebook built, it's called Jest. And I have no idea if you can see that over my screen here. I, can I move that? I can. Uh, it's called Jest, it's a, testing platform, it's, it's, it's doing all kinds of crazy stuff with tests in general. Uh, and I was thinking, hey, okay, we have X unit and N unit, and we saw that kind of stuff, and then, and, 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 hey, and then I, I, I started looking around, and then it was like, N unit is like 20 years old. Is this a J unit port? And it's like 25 years old. And then there's MS test and it's like bulky and then there's all the kind of stuff you have to bring with you and you have to, to run Visual Studio with it and blah, 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 blah. And there will come X unit and X unit is like the same thing, but it's 10 years old and, or it's almost 15 years old. And I learned a lot in, 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 in space of functional programming and functional testing style and all that. And the, the, the main goal of, of Jest is like uh, delightful JavaScript testing. It's like focus you on, 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 on testing in every way you want, but you don't have to think about testing in the first place. And then I said, okay, it shouldn't be delightful, it should be delicious. And that's the thing why tasty and delicious but net testing is going along. And there's, there's our, our little buddy here, it's a crepe. It's, I wanted to have a, a palachinkin because it's called in Austria, but uh, I can't get a, a graphic designer to design me one. So I got with a free one and uh, there are some links to the bottom. So. Uh, tasty. Taste it. it is highly inspired by Jest. It's functional. It's fluent. It's a pluggable. You can do all kinds of stuff. It's like snapshots. It's embeddable. It's just kind of a library you can plug into. Um, that sounds like, what does that all mean? Uh, the thing is like uh, with X unit, for example, you have to run it through a runner or you have to do all kinds of crazy stuff um, to get your tests running as you want to run them. And that's not the thing with Tasty. You can, that, that you can do all kinds of stuff. It's, it's a, C Sharp has uh, get a lot of, lot of, lot of more, uh, more advanced language uh, uh, projections and all, all kind of uh, um, stuff you can do with the language, with NuGet now, with the new MS Build project format, with .NET Core and .NET 5, uh, but it's not limited to all that uh, new stuff. You can use that in the older, like XAF, file new project, WinForms kind of stuff. Uh, but it's optimized for the new world of .NET 5 where everything is uniform. And yeah, and you have all that kind of approval tests, Encrunch, live unit testing that costs thousands of dollars. And you have all the small applications you uh, try to run and, 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 and interact with. And, and uh, it's all that, that, that it's not, you're, you're blowing like 500 megabytes of, of application and then you run it. So it's like more smaller, smaller and smaller application parts and uh, just launch them on their own. So um, that's a huge 
goal and, 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 and perspective, how we can build some thing of, 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 of testing and, and, and getting more confidence in our code and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but the, the main problem is like, it doesn't get low complex. It, 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 the, the complexity increases. So we have to be very descriptive how things interact with each other and and when we do some kind of performance tests and stuff like this but on the other hand we like to throw some keyboard strokes in and we want to know if if everything works and uh x unit is not high in in ceremony but you have to go and type uh, the .NET new uh, or file new project X unit. And then you have to place all uh, fact uh, attributes over your code. And you have all this kind of stuff we've seen before or with N unit. And the last one is like, uh, I, I the, 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 the problem is like, um, those are like silos. So N unit is like, okay, they support some kind of, tests, but not all of them. And, it, and then you go, go into CI, CD and do some kind of testing and, and, and have this uh, test hierarchy you want to, to test with, with performance goals uh, and, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, you don't have, you have to grab together all the kind of stuff, grab, grab some test results from there and test results from there and, and, and then get all that stuff back. In. So I hope you're still with me. Um, um, the really, really, really large goals is like, uh, do your, you define the tests and, and really, really um, be an executable platform uh to um do all kinds of testing unit to ui testing easy test no no idea whatever you want to throw at that stuff but the main main goal is like be process isolated so uh they can't um interfere with with each other so like it's like a micro process architecture or micro kernel uh, the next goals, they're all the way around. There's a little bit technical, all, all async all the way down, data driven tests are natural, no test discovery, blah, blah, blah. So there's no, no reflection uh, costs to do test discovery and really, really, really go back absolutely to, to the basics. So write a console application and you write tests code coverage and all the co other stuff is like future goals, but okay. So that's, that's tasty. It's lovely. So, uh, uh, will you show us some code? Yeah, let's I, get I, to it. Let's get to see it in action. So I, I have to minimize you guys. So, uh, how, how many time do we have left? It's like two, uh, 25 minutes. Yeah, we are already out of the time. So take the uh, time that you need. So okay. we're going to post so, it on, so, on YouTube later on. Uh, I, I, I am in a, in a empty directory. So I, I am just, I am a code guy. So I don't spend any time of the day in, 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 uh, in, in Visual Studio or designers. I am just going to go and do a dot .NET new console live, uh, 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 application, and it's just it's just a normal uh, .NET application. And if I, if I, if I go for test demo, it's just a normal. In this case, it's a .NET five application, but it doesn't matter, and it's just a uh, and it's just a console write line. So it's nothing nothing really special about it. So uh, I'm going to add a package. It's called Senial Tasty. Um, and that's the main package to write our first, first test. And I am going to add a reporter to that uh, pack, uh, to that 
um, project uh, that is just going to output something back to us. Uh, you don't have to do that in the in the future, but for now we don't really know which is the best uh, kind of way to uh, uh, what's what's the best um, uh, reporter or combination of of of, of stuff uh, uh, to get you started. So that's basically everything you have I have to do. And okay, I'm just starting Visual Studio Code and um in the in this directory and can you is is it is this large enough for everyone to read or should i, I can go? see it i can see it fine okay so um and the only thing you have to do is to include aesthetic using into the uh project so it's it's using steady using static senial .tasty, and that will bring all the the guts uh, we need to know into our uh, um, namespace. There's another thing we should do, but we uh, we don't need to to do. It's like we need to because uh, uh, everything is async. We need to uh, change our signature from public static void into public async task of int of main. So uh, that's basically helping the compiler to, to, to do some, some stuff. So uh, what is this static uh, Xenial Tasty doing? We have now with, with C Sharp, I think six or seven, uh, we can do a static import of a static class and everything inside the, um, the Tasty class that's static. I can also say using static uh, system math, for example, not Marshall, so math. Every function that's inside of math is now in our uh, uh, in our namespace. So it's like square root, and we do the same thing with uh, system dot math or with Xenial Tasty. So. Uh, it's nothing special here. It's just helping the compiler to know uh, about Tasty. So we can write, for example, xenial.tasty.it, but because we reference it back up here, we can just omit it and call it it. And it's just a function call, and it takes a name and it gets an action. So we can call that. Tasty is awesome. So let's let's do that. Tasty is awesome. So now, now of course, it doesn't allow us to just uh, do that like this because it wants to have an action as a second parameter. And I have no idea how how, how good you are with with, with lambda expressions. Or, or with with all kind of uh, uh, functional stuff, but the thing is, it takes an action, and an action is nothing more than a function that takes no arguments and returns no arguments. So it's basically the same thing as saying public, or it doesn't have to be public. It can be void, uh, void foo. Uh, that's basically the same thing. So it's a void function that takes no arguments and I can write foo here, but let's, uh, let's keep it cl simple and clean. I have no idea if, if, if people know what actions are or not. Uh, and that's basically the first tasty test we, 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 are, we wrote. But as you clearly can see, um, there's the main function and it wants, and sorry about the German uh, um, uh, error ma messages, but basically it's telling us with an async function that wants to return a task, but it doesn't. So there's another function in Tasty, which basically is the run function and it takes 
just the arguments and returns an integer as a task. So basically, basically that's it. So that's our first delicious uh, tasty Manuel, test. I have like one small question. Maybe you can show how you assert the test. <clears throat> we are going to a certain test, so. But let's run the test and let's see what's going on. Demo gods, help me. Hey, we are the taste is awesome. Nice. So, so uh, that's basically everything that's going on. Um, the thing is, there is a lot going on under the hood. But you can see, hey, there's a re reporter with some thumbs up there, and we have some timelines, and they have to minimize all that. Uh, uh, okay, I just move it down. So they have, I feel like uh, it's like 122 or no, not almost 100 milliseconds of of tests. Uh, uh, and the thing is, like this is the the thing with the report uh, with the reporters. So we have uh, uh, reporters that get thrown into that thing. But normally you only have to write uh, code against Tasty and that's just the executable thing. But I am going into that in uh, a quarter of a second. Uh, the thing is like, um, we return here the error code and that's really, really, really um, uh, uh, it, it's, it's a good thing to have that kind of mechanism because if you're doing like CI CD systems, uh, normally processes are, are uh, uh, telling each other if they fail, if they do uh, return a non zero exit code. So uh, on, on uh, Windows, it's called, uh, there's an a, um, uh, environment variable that's called error level that just returns the last error. Uh, a variable that's get returned from the last program. So for example, if I say uh, return, let's just comment it out and I say return, return, ta uh, await task from result minus one, And they do the, the same thing again. And that there's no output because I'd never taught uh, uh, Tasty. So there, there is some mechanism we can uh, provide between processes. So it's not nothing too fancy, but uh, if you're new to CI CD, that is uh, uh, really. Uh, yeah, blowing your mind sometimes. So, okay, let's go with a really, 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 really simple demo. Because I am so um, uh, a great programmer. I am starting with the most basic demo I ever can think about. It's just a calculator. And it's going, it's a calculator and have a, an add method and it's got a, an X and a Y and it's going to, Adding x and y, so let's get, uh, let's let's look at um, a basic tasty test. So tasty is still awesome, but we will replace it with a much more awesome test case. And now you can see it is an arbitrary string. So uh, the name of the test is just uh, a string. And there we have a function that gets called when we invoke the test. But as you can clearly see, we instantiate a new calculator and then we add one and two. And now you're, we are on the assertions. Yeah, now what? And as always, uh, we can run that again. And what will happen? Nothing, because it doesn't fail. Of course, it doesn't fail because we didn't do anything with the result. So let's talk about uh, assertions. T 
Tasty doesn't come with any assertion library at all. And that is by design. There will maybe in the future, but I'm not 100% sure if we will or not, but uh, Tasty is not some kind of small library thingy that uh, and you have to all kind of do, uh, do all the kind of shit. Uh, if you look at Tasty, uh, you have like, for now it's like six overloads, but you can go into the thousands of overloads because uh, this is just a function or a functor, if you call it for um, um, in any functional program way. Uh, and because the C sharp compiler is really, really smart, we can just return a Boolean instead. So beforehand we had an action of T and now we return a funk of boo. So we are inserting a funk that should return a boo. Every, everybody with me so yeah. far? Uh, so far so good. So if I run that again, nothing should change. But what happens if we change our implementation? So we are clearly making an error. Because we have really, really good math skills. So you can clearly see that we don't hit any uh, we didn't return true for from our test. So that's crucial for Tasty. Uh, to be honest, I am not 100% sure if this will work, but let's uh, try to debug this because that's a normal .NET uh, program. There's nothing special about Tasty at all. Can we hit a breakpoint? I'm not 100% sure. Demo, demo gods don't, don't want to. Demo, oh, there. Demo there, 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 there. There they are. So we have our calcul calculator. We have our system under test. So it's a calculator. We add one and two. We get a result from run. And we return three. And it, it clearly it fails. So uh, there's nothing special about a tasty program. It's just a normal .NET project. Besides, for now, it's being .NET Framework 5, but that, that's not nothing special. Um, so basically, okay, you're telling me, okay, good. Um, you can do all kind of stuff, but the thing is like, uh, what does this help? One plus two equals three, uh, nothing. <laughs> so, uh, okay. I am not sure if you are, if everybody on the, on the, uh, is, is, is clear with the new things that are coming with, with uh, .NET. So um, I am going a little bit functional. So um, there is this concept called tuples and it's in .NET for free, since .NET free, I guess, or free five. And the tuple is basically uh, provides static methods for creating a tuple object. What's a tuple object? A tuple object is, uh, a generic type that can hold multiple values. Uh, and what does this look like? It's like a tuple and it's as on item one and it's calling bool out here, the first parameter. And there's the item two and it's a string, it's the second parameter. If I can uh, add another one, it's like one. Uh, there's an item three and it's like an int. Okay, so everybody with me so far? 
a tuple is just like an object, but it's an object with with uh, uh, parameters in a row. It's like a, an array where the first thing and the second thing and the first thing, but you know what it is. But the problem is tuple is a class. So tuple is system, static class, tuple, and then they decided, hey, it's really, really shitty to have a class. Uh, so they created a value tuple, and the value tuple is a struct. And what you can immediately see is that the compiler picks up um, the tuple class and say, okay, if the first value is a Boolean, the second is a string, and the third one is an int. So, and you can see the bracket, brackets. Uh, and the value tuple is a struct, so it doesn't, it does all kind of really, really crazy stuff with comparison and all the kind of stuff, but it doesn't do, does anything on the heap. It is just a, a, um, going in, in, in uh, it, it's really, really memory efficient to create a value tuple. So, and in C sharp six, I think I've called it somewhere here, but I'm not sure, I got C sharp six, you can create a value tuple by just uh, doing uh, this kind of construct where you just do it in braces. And you can see it's the same thing with a bool string and, and an int. And um, I built this in into, into uh, Xenial uh, or into Tasty uh, to provide more value to this and more uh, precise answers. So if you have, for example, a result equals equals three, I also can provide uh, you poop at midnight. Of course, that, that that's not that, that's not the nicest thing to 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 say to any uh, to anybody. But okay, you pooped at midnight. But that's not the thing. It doesn't help us either. So uh, we can provide more value by using the new interpolated string features that C sharp has. So an interpolated string is basically the same thing as saying string dot format uh, foo zero uh, comma blah and oh yeah and it said foo dot blah but with an interpolated string we can for example say something like this We can say, okay, dollar sign, it's an interpolated string, one plus two should be three, but was result. So, okay, it is a little bit uh, verbose, but better than getting nothing. So I think that's a, that's a great way to, to uh, get into uh, really, really hard uh, um, business problems and you can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, stuff here. So just return a tuple with the Boolean value that says if the test will fail or not. Manuel, and one question. Do you have any SAF examples with Tasty? I will, I, I, I get into that. So I, I, I will get into that, that later, but just fix the, the calculator for now. I don't have a demo on getting uh, testing uh, XAF applications, but I will get into the, the, the really, really main goal of Tasty. That's called, it's, it's, it can run everywhere. So basically we have done a basic test. You can do that with X unit, with any unit. There's nothing special except the case that, that you can return tuples. You can, there are, there are some uh, some some mentions or or stuff like this, but let's let's keep it simple for now. Uh, okay, so let's get back to that. 
but the, the, the main thing is like, okay, uh, we have a single test, it's so a one to plus three. Okay, let's dive into more uh, grouping details or, or, or how to group our tests. So we can basically do, uh, there's a function, it is just a function, it's coming from Tasty, uh, Alexander Tasty, but we all, also can uh, use a describe block. And the describe block, if I can copy and paste correctly, is a function that has another function or a, as many function tree deep you like, and it describes a block of a, 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 a test. So you can describe and you, have, you can have a it and then another describe and you can mix and match them as, as ever you want. And what this does is like, it does a, 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 a tree uh, inspection of describe this calculator because we have the name of operator that can be a string. And we have another nested thing that describes the add method. And Testy will recognize this and, and try to put out a, a, a nice kind of representation of all of that. Uh, but that's rather, in this way, it's really, really clunky to read. It's like calculator at one plus two equals three. It's not that bad, but it's all to be descriptive on your test. So, uh, we should rather do something like this. So we can again use uh, the, the um, interpolated string function and say like calculator should add one plus three equals two, uh, equals three. So it's a much, it's much easier and, 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 and better to read at least I guess so. Uh, but that's how Tasty works into all that all, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, but that's nice and that's great. And how to do some uh, data driven tests because there's X unit with the theory attribute of the data or the inline theory attribute. And, and you, you saw that the, the async task thing and the, why is all that the noise there? So uh, let's do some data-driven tests. So with a sim simple add function, it's not, not that bad. So um, I'm just going to add a, a, a file here called calculator.add.txt. It's nothing special, it's a text file. And there's all the kind of stuff in there. And basically it's a CSV file or a comma separate value file. That's just calcul uh, it's like A or X, Y and the result and X, Y and the result is just all the, all the way down. And of course it's going to return 24, uh, 42. So, uh, okay. We have to do some assumptions to the uh, add function or the describe block. So we have to do it async. And then we have to read the files, uh, the file. And let's do some system IO. And it's just reading that text file and selecting out uh, with some link magic, uh, a new object, a new blah, 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 and to, to an anonymous object that's with like A, B result. And because every call to the it function will produce a new test case, we can just do this. So we have like a, a for each over all tests and all tests is like a, a, B result thing, we can use it here. And if we run it, it's just 
doing data-driven tests. So that, that, it, that is actually amazing because there are so many articles that uh, pe where people is talking about how you should name your test. Just like that, it's a huge discussion. Like, uh, how do you know what this test will do just by reading the signature of the, of the function? Yeah, so in this yeah. case, you don't, I mean, you can use as much magic and show what, whatever it's doing there. You, you are in control how this string is formatted. So I can say, uh, yay, tasty. And I can run again. I think you're missing one A. <laughs> no, maybe. <laughs> but OK, you get the point. At least if this is unique against the, the, the testing suite, and you, of course, it needs to compile and all that stuff, but it's like, it's instant. There is no, no lag about it. It needs to compile because uh, if I go to uh, dir, uh, dir, it's just a normal. So I go to bin, cd bin, and then I go to debug, and then go to not five. I get it for dir star, star exe. Okay, tasty demo. Probably it's too fast, so it 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 it, it breaks my console. Okay, so uh, um, it this is a thing. So uh, clear. Stop that run. It's like 200, 300, 500 test servers. I have no idea. I I didn't count it. It's such a total total move. But that's the thing. You can name it whatever you want. That's, they, those are arbitrary strings that are getting into, into a, a constructed tree, if you will. Like, and remember, I'm still in VS Code. I never touched with Visual Studio so far. So, okay, uh, okay, we can do this kind of test in a much more functional way. So um, we can do that. No, we can't because I missed a line. Better. So we can do some kind of local function that just do a return of A, B, and result. And that's, again, the tuple thing I was talking about earlier. But you can do that kind of stuff. And then the test even gets easier. So uh, we have to do that all kind of test.a, test.b, but we can make the test even clearer. So um, just to do a, a wait, read, and deconstruct our tuple. So we have the tuple here with a, b, and result. And we're just returning it here as an array, and we have just a, b, and it's just a little bit easier to read. Uh, not probably, you can do whatever you want. So it's basically the same thing. It's not, not, nothing really, really, really changed. But if you look at that file, it's like mm, 54 lines of code, and we have this calculator here, and OK, it's, it's, it's OK. So uh, let's do a small refactoring. You don't do that anyway, because you don't have the test code and the production code in the same assembly. So just um, move that into our own file. So we have a, a, a calculator CS thing with a namespace. Uh, and now comes .NET 5 and C Sharp 9. And, 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 and that's basically the, same, the, the, the main thing I am thinking about why I think Taste is really, really, really a useful tool. So I am running here um, .NET uh, info. So I have all kind of stuff installed. But I am running in Windows 10 with Windows 64 with an with an .NET 5 preview. Uh, and with the .NET 5 preview, there comes C Shop 9 preview. 
So um, I'm going to activate uh, the preview by uh, using a, a CS Proj switch called Lang version, and I just do the preview from C Sharp 9. So uh, I can use all the great things they discovered and, 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 and made it into the alpha or so the the thing is like this is really really a lot of code we're like thinking about namespaces and all this import and with the public site main and, blah, 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 blah. and we were like nine, nine layers so it's like one two three four five six layers seven eight layer layers deep in 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 temptation and i think that's that's way too much. So uh, with the new features of, of C Sharp 9, we can just remove a lot of stuff. For example, this. And then we are going to have that. And we have going to have that. And we can delete those lines. And then it's shouting at us because we don't have a namespace, so we do a namespace. Uh, it's better if, it, if we do a using here. Sorry for this code. So it's like a tasty demo. And now we are down to describing the calculator that should that thing and we have a local function and we iterate over all the stuff and we return a wait and see what what happens here and we have the same thing nothing changes because the compiler did all the magic for us but i don't like this data driven thing in between here because it's adding noise so i am putting it down because it's just a function we can do whatever we want, but it's in one file. And now we have like 42 lines of code. And we have an iterative uh, test that is like hundreds of lines of code, something like this. So it's still outputting the same, doesn't change anything, but it's like reducing the noise of writing a test and getting stuff up. And going and, and, and all the kind of stuff. So uh, I'm, we, we, we even could make this even more uh, dense, but I, I don't uh, think we should do that because we, we only have 20 minutes left. Uh, there's one thing I want to shout out because we are in like a four each and we are doing the calculator again and again and again. And we don't have to do that. We can just move that up in, for example, here. Because this tree is like executed all the way down. And this is guaranteed to happen before this. So it, this is this all kind of, uh, uh, I am going to, to set up and tear down this test. You don't have to know what the compiler does. It's exactly the same thing. This will be the same instance though. So that instance will always be the same. Same. If I move that down, it will be for every test case, a new instance. It's like a lifetime problem. You have to think about how uh, things get instantiated. So, but you can see, hey, basically we are referring here to suit.add a, b, a, and b, and we're storing the result and then we get the expected back. So we can just do a sing, single return here. It's basically the same thing. It's just sat a plus a and b equals the expected. That's the same thing. And because we have the new uh, hotness of C sharp, we can just do a lambda expression and get rid of all of that. So, and I like to 
uh, wrap it this way. It's not that much shorter, but is it is a little bit shorter. Well, it's the same thing. Is everybody with me so far? I am. But it's, so far, so good. So, so it, it's, a matter, it's, a, it's a matter of choice. So, but the thing is, what is tasty about? The the, all, all the kind of crazy stuff with, with uh, uh, lambdas and then for each and data driven, you can decide. And it's all, of, all, the, all the kind of, you can interact with the system, with the tests, and then blah, 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 and there's a run, and you can, can interact all, with all that stuff. But let's do something really, really, really crazy. You saw me adding this really, really boring uh, console report. That's basically thumping out everything that's great. But on the other hand, it's like really boring. So I can add another plugin because reporters are just plugins. So I can, for example, do some nice stuff and add a an iron cat. So I will add an iron cat and probably we should see from rainbow, rainbow of joy. Yeah, but that was way too fast. So let's add some delay. So we have the parameter first test. I will go back to the to the to this state, and I will say it's async. And now we just await task dot delay for twenty milliseconds. And now we can see that our Nyan cat is really really happy. And it's just a plugin that reports differently. Uh, and the way that works is um, all NuGet packages uh, need to have some kind of mechanism to tell the tasty runtime there's something they can interact with. So let's really, really, really quick look into that. Uh, and I will fire up the developer command prompt from Visual Studio, and there's a tool called uh, uh, Ildasm. And I'm sure some of you are definitely uh, aware of the tool. And I'm here, and then I am just doing demo. And there's a really, really, it is a quite an old tool, but what the NuGet packages does is like inject an attribute into uh, the, it's like, where it is, there it is, a tasty plugin attribute that says, hey, there's a type and there's a method you can use and it's called use Nyan cat reporter. So uh, it's all compile time based. So there's no reflection magic going at all. It's just you are deciding which bits and bytes go into your testing thing, and you can chain them up and, and, and link them together. Uh, and that's the reason why it's so fast. So there's no, no plugin or no discovery phase or testing phase or something like this. So th that's exactly what, what happens if you do tasty exit. So it's, it's so fast it can't even that did run. So, and it did run. <laughs> that's, that's basically the thing. Uh, okay, so, and now there's the thing with XAI. So I have shown all the thing with, with low level and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. You can write your own reports and you can write and run Tasty wherever you want. And you can mix and match all of that shit. And I prepared the demo this time because uh, it is a little bit trickier because there is no out of the box support. But basically, all I've I've done is like there's one there's a little small glitch in XAF. I have I had to go around. I need to talk to Dennis to get away from that. 
we have the same calculator, we have a, a controller with a simple action, and it let, let us run an action, and it does it do async. So nothing too special about it. And then we have a win controller that's basically opening a file dialog, show the file dialog, do the same read, describe all the kind of shit, run it, and then it has this kind of report function. And you can register your own reporter as many as you want, because it's basically a function that you can register within a scope or framework. And then you have to go for a little bit of magic to uh, uh, get the non-persistent um, thing going. So everything is all sync, uh, async. So I have 10 minutes left and I have two more awesome small demos. So it's a, it's a standard .NET Core, find your project thingy. You can do that with, with, with .NET 4, 5, 6 as well. But for the demo gods, I just have to run tests. I use the same calculator at thing we did before. And now it's running inside of XAR. And if you don't believe me, uh, sorry. Uh, co uh, no, Explorer. No, I can code dot. There's this thing. The so first thing, 32, 0, 32. No, I don't think it's, it's uh, 82. I have no idea what happens if I do that again. It might blow up. No, there it is. But it's now it's now running crazy. <laughs> wasn't 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 supposed to run that twice. <laughs> let's let's do that again, quick. <laughs> Let's not battle test that. It's really, really alpha stuff. But I did some some conditional appearance stuff and 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 all the all the all the cool stuff. So let's run again. Calculate the add. There it is. And there's the failed test. And I I, I really really did the and that's conditional appearance. So it's really really cool. So it's basically the same thing. You can do that wherever you want. You can do that remotely. You can connect stuff together. But there's one last thing I need to show, and that's the CLI. Um, and then I'm finished. So let's go back here, back to uh, 32. And there's the thing that's, that's called uh, um, .NET Global Tools or .NET Local Tools. So uh, I, we can run tasty tests in different contexts. Uh, I am just going to install a local tool. So I have to make a new tool manifest. So this will uh, create a, a config file. So let's type uh, .config .net tools. It's basically empty. And now I can install the tasty tool. I really love that name. It's like tasty tool, <laughs> it's like candy. And for now, I am just uh, invoking a command that's called studio. Um, there will be interactive and filter and all that kind of stuff. But basically, I am in, in the directory where uh, 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 Proch, where a uh, sysproj file lives. So I can just run this studio and it's opening up a graphical thing of my runtime or my testing infrastructure. And there is my CS project file and I can open that. And it's building my project and now it dies. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> uh, 
I think that's because Visual Studio is some somehow blocking something. So let's try that again. Let's do a remove dear slash s slash q bin and ob up. And let's do a studio again. And now build. And it fails again. Okay, sorry. Yeah, that's demo thing. It's time to finish. <laughs> it's time to finish. It's like eight minutes before three hours. So normally I, I, I can, uh, it lists commands. So you can define your commands and plugins and all kind of stuff and you can plug into the tasty runtime. And then you can interact with all the kind of stuff and if you're not uh, tied to, I, I think that, oh, I think I, I think that's where uh, uh, cause of Nyan, Nyan is 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 very bad. So let's do the console again. Give it one last try. No, it died. <laughs> okay, yeah. That's the thing. It, it, it was everything live. I ne it was, you can do everything I did uh, on your own. There is a lot of documentation out there. Really, I, 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 all that kind of stuff. You can go with setup and teardown. And I didn't even show watch mode, exit codes, data driven tests, organizing plugins, writing your own plugins. Yeah. Is really, 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 really a lot of stuff. Uh, the XAF one is new. I wrote that today. Um, yeah, um, let's go back to slides real quick. There is no assertion library. You can do whatever you want through exceptions. There's execution, snapshot, report, the reporting. Uh, it will be sometimes in the future on a commercial license, but I have no idea when and how. There's a lot with diffing, image, laser, UI, XF, database, snapshots, and yeah, um, stay sane and tasty. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have six minutes left. Nice. So I hope, yeah, please continue. I, I, I hope it wasn't too overwhelming. It was like, like a lot of stuff. Yeah, there is a lot of things to cover there and we have to process all the information that we just got, but it does look awesome. So if you stop sharing your screen, Marvin. Sure. Okay, let me share mine quickly. Okay, these are the links it has. I want to point out that there has been, while you were doing your presentation, a lot of discussion on the chat. I want to say this for the people that are watching this later on. If you get in the meet up, please ask your question. Dennis is answering there. We have a great discussion about domain components and using on place. Or if you have a solution on domain component, is not going to be uh, translatable to user on Blazor directly. So there are some works around or some recommendation that Dev Express is providing. Uh, also about, uh, let me take a look quickly because I lost my chat. I want to just, we also were talking about doing easy tests, uh, functional tests in c -char and so on, so on. So please join us, ask your question. We'll do our best to, to answer them. So really quick in the five, four minutes that we have, we have four minutes, so we're gonna do a lightning talk. Okay. We're gonna just say an answer or something quickly. Some questions I, that we have on our, sorry, you wanna say well, something, man? Yeah, uh, I, I just read, read in, the, in the chat, when will uh, Xenio will be, will be available? Um, the same time as Tasty, uh, basically. But the thing is, I, I have to work out some support details. Um, it uh, tasty and Xenial will be not 100% for free, but it was it will be like 
um, 50 euros per death per year. Basically, the thing I'm, I'm going for. Uh, I think it will be available in September. Got it. So we have like like six questions, and we're not going to go in deep. We're just going to do like 30 seconds for each question, and then we can go in deep on our Facebook group or anything else. But I do want everyone on our Facebook group and everyone who is in our uh, social media that if they ask, ask a question, they have a chance to get an answer for one of us or for Dennis, for Demis Press, for anyone. So uh, also on the chat, they were asking, we're asking about a uh, SAF place on how to do custom control. So we're going to get that one to, to the last one. But for example, in the Facebook group, we have the question, how about using Criteria Editor to allow administrators and end users the ability to manage this view feature? And they actually provide this link of uh, I'm not sure how to do that. So uh, again, pretty much here we have uh, SAF give you a complete flexibility to actually filter down the data exactly to the user that need to see it and no one else. So we are definitely going to follow up and you said we say we're going to follow up offline so out of the meetup and it's online either way. So we're going to follow up with that uh, SAFR so we can uh, ask them exactly what is the problem specific that he has, and we're going to go with that. Uh, second one, continuous, conditional appearance, the hide content in list view. I think that, I guess the issue here is that sometimes you're trying to hide something, let's say a value for a column, but there is another record in the same list view that that value is not hidden. So in the list view, you cannot hide the whole column. You have, you hide all the whole column, or you cannot hide just one record. So that's it. Can can I can I add something? Uh, yeah, Dan, please. Dan, Dan, Dennis is uh, um, is conditional appearance in in list view for hiding whole columns isn't uh, recommended anymore, or is it? Well, um, I think uh, it's it can be used in nested list view if you have a criteria based on master object. It but can be used, it, but, but, but it's but quite it, rare. I, I, I don't think it's it's really best practice anymore, I guess. I, I never, uh, uh, I never uh, did it successfully on my own in, in larger projects, but... Uh, I, I, many, uh, some people still use, use it and uh, they can do it with uh, rules or by writing code. Uh, handling events so some people still use it um, and uh, all i can say that it's quite advanced and rare scenario yep 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 perfect so if we keep going with this lighting talk 30 seconds is the answer that we are uh, uh, trying to get report best practice i we can't we can't handle that in 30 seconds <laughs> yeah but i will say this only I asked them, what, is, what exactly about report best practice? I never got an answer, but I will say something. If you have a report that is going through seven tables and bringing data and doing a lot of calculation, do a view, map it to a HPO object, and do the report from that one. Uh, going to the next one, customization of templates for logging or master pages. I did a project not long ago where we have to put, besides the logo of the SAF web, a text field. So we couldn't do that directly. So we do have to customize the template for the for the SAF web. So pretty much, I don't think that this is related directly to SAF, but to your HTML and uh, knowledge. So you just create the new template, uh, reference that template from SAF, and do any change that you need. And again, if you have if guys uh, have any issue, please reach out directly, and we will be uh, happy to help. Uh, Pop-up UI in ASP.NET web, web I think that the case there is about if it's a nested object space or something, but we never got an answer what is specific. So again, Safer who asked that question, please reach out back. SAF release implementation with drop and drop. I think that that needs a video. That needs a YouTube video or something showing how it works because it's a, a more a specific topic. And I got this one. This was the last one about Shopify, out token injection in SAF pages. 
I think that he was just actually he put a laughing face like it was something that he needs and we are going to like try to help him out but it's not directed to SAF. So I, wa I went through all of this really quick because I want to get to the three last ones. And the three last ones uh, are how mature is SAF Blazer and then I, will, I want a quick, action, uh, a quick answer, nothing quickly. And then SAF Blazer update and SAF Blazer custom control. Dev Express has not still released and they are not ready yet to the release the documentation to how to do a custom control. We have done a few here, but I want one to get a quick answer for you guys from how mature is SAF Blazor. And second, I want to talk about if we can agree on the topic from the next uh, meetup. I think that this one has been a little uh, more comprehensive, a little more technical because it's about testing. It's not something that everybody is using and again i want to thank everybody who has a stick to us to the end we have been over three hours now so it's a the big uh, bitter pill to swallow so thank you again but i think that we could do in the next uh, meetup because one thing that i want to is like tell everybody how great is up so and um, i don't have that platform that i can okay hey, let me explain to you everything we don't have the time if we're in a conversation so we might do a meetup for .NET developers that have never seen SAF, and let's try to, to, to say why we like SAF and do like the whole uh, presentation and ending in that meetup. And I think that we can do that meetup in two hours if we like, we can escape. talk about the Blazor updates because the next meetup is in a month from now. And I think that 20.2, and then you can correct me, it will be around two months it's going to be out. So we can do a meetup before the 20.2, with everything that we have played with SAF Blazor, everything that we think, all the promising, all the exciting uh, development that is coming, and also why SAF is our framework of choice. So again, Josh, uh, your two cents for both of you, and I think that with that, we are uh, finishing our meetup today. Anyone? I'm, I'm, that's, there's nothing to add to that. <laughs> so. ah, perfect then. So really? then, yeah, yeah, please. Then, then uh, uh, probably next time we 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 can look into some more detailed testing with 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 Tasty in conclusion with XF. I just showed how to bind those together. Uh, the CLI thing didn't work, so um, that's a little bit unfortunate. But that's how the demo calls are working. So uh, yeah. I'm I'm really pleased that the, uh, that Dennis joined our uh, our stand up today, especially in his holidays. So have a, have a nice time in Vienna. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you, Dennis, for showing up. Thanks all the staffers who stick to us to the end, and look forward to the next one. The next one we're gonna talk about a lot about staff blazer, and we're gonna talk about all the things that a beginner that is a .NET developer that have never seen staff to look up and why we definitely use that for all our uh, line of business application. Uh, yeah. There is another... Uh, yeah, please, Dennis. I just also wanted to thank uh, everyone for this uh, meeting, for your questions. It was a pleasure for me to be here to answer. It's uh, it's a holiday, but for me, it's like a break from museums, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, cool. Thank cool. you. So uh, let's do the blast. What what beer are you drinking today? I'm on Murawa. So Dennis, I have no idea. I I, I saw it. Stella. Uh, I, 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 uh, uh, I'm doing gesture, as you know. Jose, you should, you should stop sharing your screen so yeah. we can see each other. Yeah. Done. So I'm I'm on a yeah. Murawa again, but a, a small one this time. <laughs> Yeah, and we um, and we're a traditional one, Stella. So, no, <laughs> and also uh, Coca Cola light. <laughs> okay, again, thank you everyone for the great conversation, for showing up, for being it. I had a coffee over here. <laughs> nice. And uh, we'll uh, definitely look forward to the next one. Thank you, as always. The conversation about stuff is great. And you guys have a wonderful day. See you next okay. month. Bye bye. <laughs> Blazer. Ciao. <laughs>